Hello and welcome to DCP Live episode number 164, a special post giving of thanks. <laughs> yes. Black Friday edition. I call this the feeling fat and juicy. The fat game. and juicy episode of DCP Just for 2019. The, uh, after you stuffed your face, hopefully, with really delicious food. Yes, as a matter of fact. Uh, mm -hmm. Speaking of Thanksgiving, because I brought it up and, you know, fat and juicy and all that. <laughs> Great segue. Yeah. How was everyone's Thanksgiving? <laughs> Mine was good. Honest, I played Sekiro. Okay. Thank you. I like was that? watching that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it's but, very Dark Souls-esque? Uh, it is. I never got as into Dark Souls. But oh. Sam, what did you? Sorry, I, we said it at the same. No, time. you're What'd fine. You oh, mine you're was good. We guest. just we hosted for some friends from LA, and it was great. Nothing caught on fire. That's good. Nothing That's always burnt. a good sign. Yeah. So Food did you delicious. cook all your meals? Cooked did you cook all. the meal? Wow. Every is day. it your first time hosting, or was uh, um, is this something yeah. you do regularly? Well, I mean, I normally just have my husband, myself, and our son, but mm -hmm. my brother's living with us now, and then we invited our friends over, so I cooked way more than normal. That's good, though. we're going to be eating it for the next week. Yeah. Yeah. My, oh, my thing that I look forward to about Thanksgiving is the idea that there's always leftovers. Be like, oh, what do I want to have tonight? Oh, Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again. Yeah. Yeah. Usually like four or five But do you make anything days. unique? Like, do you take something that you made and make something else with it? Like a post Thanksgiving amalgamation. Like a sandwich. Oh, yeah. a turkey sandwich. Okay. Are you yeah. Do you have specific turkey sandwiches that you make every my, day after? My mother in law makes a turkey soup always with the whole <gasps> oh, thing. Yum. Like the every that's everything delicious. that's left over. Yeah. I just that love that. Wow. That's that a really cozy. smart easy. Yeah. Yeah, I look well, forward to that. Right now is a really good time to go to the store and get a deal on some turkey because uh, post Thanksgiving, if you want to definitely have leftovers and have it economical for the family, yeah. just go grab a turkey. Just right cook now. another it's bird. Good. The Black Friday just deal. Cook another bird, man. <laughs> They're so cheap right now. It's like Valentine's candy. Yeah, Damn. it is. It is. It's <laughs> after Halloween. It's the best time to buy next year's Halloween candy. And it's it right, the same for turkey. Interesting. You have a giant freezer well, not in your thing. garage or basement or something mm -hmm. you just fill it up with birds freezer <laughs> and i mean but pope's yeah, right 2017 like, you'll have turkey for like 2018 got space for 2018 <laughs> <laughs> remember back in 2012 when turkeys were so cheap i've got three of them yeah just in case right <laughs> you never know no, so or they can be a lethal was, weapon would, yeah i was set True. to host thanksgiving um I was set to host Thanksgiving for our family for 18 people. And um, at Ooh, the last that's a minute, lot of people. Yeah, I know. At the last minute, um, my family switched locations to my sister's house. And I acted like. Is that because they know, don't trust offended. your cooking? <laughs> oh, no, no. They actually came because they trusted my cooking. I, I, I cooked last year. And you I made Taco last Bell. Year. <laughs> I did. I just, I just Uber Eats. Taco Bell for yeah. 18 people. It was like $12. It was And great. they were like, oh man, a traditional <laughs> taco Thanksgiving. Yeah. Traditional was was Mexican best. Thanksgiving. It's like, yes. it reminds me of actually Aqua Teen Hunger Force with the the future. Anyway, there's, if you guys seen this one, they make taco pie. People okay. out there will know what I'm talking about. That's what Pope made. I've seen that. An amazing about. episode from a robot of like future past. It's so good. Okay. He's, he's like a robot turkey. Robot turkey. So, mm, is that Hope's taco a robot pie? Turkey? Yeah. Surprise. That is actually my dream right there. <laughs> to be a robot. That's You're... why he's collecting turkeys. Well, yes. Exactly. Oh, that'll make sense. To rule them all. Yes, yeah. yes and no. Like I, I, I feel like our future as a species is oh, to find a way to download our consciousness into robot. And you into could be, if you wanted to, be a oh. robot turkey. You could be a robot anything at that point. That's some sort that's of Westworld we type of stuff going on here. Oh, yeah. Like you could be robot, whatever, whatever exoskeleton you wanted. Just download your consciousness into it. Totally, man. That's, 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 that's where I think Robot or cyborg? Hmm. Well, is there a difference? I yeah, well, I felt like we we're going to get into robot nuances because you said exoskeleton. And then I'm like, what's it? Is that for like if you have a some kind of under? If you need to like carry more than 300 kilos of parcels <laughs> on your back. <laughs> Right. right. That's true. <laughs> well, so I guess my my philosophy or my thinking is that we're going to be bioengineering. Like, our, we're going to learn how to bioengineer. Biohack our bodies. 
Yeah, like you would be able to create brains and stuff and then put them into like exoskeletons and stuff. Well, Pope, right. it's nearly 2020 and this isn't happening yet. So yet. It, will, yeah. it will. I'm not I, holding I, out I, hope. I mean, all we got is I, the I freaking Cybertruck man. To do that. All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I actually <laughs> like the way that looks. Yeah? Uh, I'm not going to like it. It looks futuristic, cool. you know? It yeah, stands out. Future. That's for sure. It's different. <laughs> yeah, it is different. I just, yeah. I just can't picture, you know, people... A mom calling her five kids to the grocery store. The, you know, am I going to go pick up some feed at the at the local feed store to feed? Oh, like farm animals? My, yeah, like it's not going to happen. Oh, it's your standard. Like you're in the middle of a zombie apocalypse issued vehicle. Sure. You know? that's what it's for. Something. Maybe we don't know how good it is in a zombie apocalypse. This would be valuable information. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, like I want that to be in an advertisement for some sort of all all road uh utility truck or something like how good is it at plowing fields of zombies i don't want to see it doing donuts in a field or going over a big I mean, rock it, yeah. the tesla well, cyber truck that should be the ad frankly yeah it First really should all, be actually. I, I think the fact that it can change with hydraulics its height on the fly is a very key selling point for a zombie apocalypse because think about how many shows you've seen where the they're running over the zombies yeah. and they're okay and then they pile up underneath and then they pick the tires up and it's that's what <laughs> they're stuck up. yeah yeah yes so think about that that's this is important stuff yeah but you know what i wouldn't design it that way i would actually put like a blender under the car that sucks oh. them up and like blends them all into like a puree you could have a zombie soup. Um, and you could yeah it stores it in the Wait carriage of the car soup. so you mow Fantastic. them over it's a zombie Fantastic. mower juicer and then that actually you can power the car and also you can turn it into like yeah food I so don't, how many motors does zombies. this you can't eat zombies zombie friend cyber truck you can't oh because the infection there's an infection well, no, you can there's just no nutrition well, they don't bite what it, mm, They're husks. See, this just depends what kind of zombies they are because maybe we can't eat them we just can't get bit by them but so. It's yeah, an internal well, defense exactly. mechanism anyway. Even if you blenderize them, right? You have juice then blenderize. available blenderize. to smear <laughs> over your and get out oh, of the situation. Like Walking Dead. Right. Right. I remember so that situation. That was right. Nasty. So you'll be able to mask your sense like, to escape. World War Z, where Ooh. they're freaking crazy. Yeah, I'm going like, to go with the World War Z run. side of things where it's a virus that clearly infects you many ways, not just through a bite. Because uh, mm. I think that's... That's so technically more plausible, honestly. Yeah. Oh, I don't like that answer. <laughs> what are the zombies from the Will Smith movie? What was, where were those? Uh, they oh, they couldn't go out during the daytime. They were like a, an yeah. evolution. I just want a Michael Jackson thriller zombie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the fastest zombies. they could go is These just like okay. at, on the beat, you know? So if you were just slightly <laughs> on a faster tempo, you'd be able to get away. Like, but you have to dance to get away faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, yeah that's you just start making your own beat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I could, yeah. That makes sense. That's great. I can get Man, there's that. so much Destiny news this week, as you can tell. Right? Oh. Well, <laughs> you know what? We didn't officially introduce Sam. Sam, welcome that's to right. the show yeah. for the first time. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this welcome. is the first time? Yeah. Yes. yes. It's been a, it's been an oversight be. on my part. Well, oh. we were going to talk to you about that, Pope, but yeah. resolved. Yeah. Exactly. So, Sam, um, uh, uh, for those maybe in the audience who, um, you know, haven't checked out your stream, tell us about it. What do, what do you what do you like to what do you like to play? So I'm very much a variety caster. Um, it really just depends on what is going on, like what new games are out or what I'm trying to uh, complete. So if I wanted to do Destiny, then I would go and do like my raids and stuff like that. But I haven't done that a lot recently. I've been more so into a replay of Breath of the Wild. Oh, nice. Um, Good choice. But I do that or I do Sims or Stardew or Sea of Thieves. Mm. It just depends on oh. what's going on, what I want to play that day. Does, so, good picks. Yeah, when everything. you're playing Sea of Thieves, is there mm. at times where somebody may or may not puke on you and you don't know it? <laughs> Does it happen? No, that's actually very fun. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh I bet. Yeah. Okay. It's so as long fun. As you it's don't a get giggle puked fest. Then. Oh mm -hmm. no, then it's hilarious if you fall <laughs> off the ship and everyone's going. See, Fran, <laughs> your, your, your screen is covered in puke. It's part of being a pirate yeah, is to be okay See, with Fran. getting puked on. Yeah. You're not I'm a real the person pirate until you get puked on. Yeah. See, Fran, come on. You just have to embrace it. All right. 
Yeah, you know, it just needs to roll right off of you, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so just jump in the water, wash it off. <laughs> think of it like the zombie blender uh, thing to cover you up, right? You know, so you blend in. You turn it into chum. Now, I, I now that I think about it for a second here, my my daughter had a stomach bug the last couple of days, and. After spending time cleaning the inside of the car and multiple changes of clothes and the smell, I'm with Fran on this. Pu getting puked on virtually or not, <laughs> yeah, no good. That's no fine. It triggers your memory. You it's, know? it's it's a disgusting, you know, bile. Ugh, no, thank you. It's bad. That's true. Baby puke, it's understandable. Baby puke is gross. Oh, I agree. It's curdled milk. It's Ugh. like it's disgusting. It's bad. That yeah, does sound like, like Briar's puke, to be honest. Right. But the volume <laughs> difference between like a Briar like ejection versus <laughs> Rocket now, Baby. Do you play with other people difference. that troll you like Briar might? Or do you like run a tight ship on your stream? What, very who, tight you, ship. Very tight oh. ship. I am a family friendly streamer, so mm -hmm. I have to be very particular on who is on my stream. Because mm -hmm. I need to be able to trust them and they'll be able to. Totally you know, done. Same with Fran. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely yeah, Briar. Ooh, Briar. Friendly. 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 So, uh, so you you like to stay family friendly. Uh, mm -hmm. So my my son who's twelve can tune in and watch your streams and he yeah. wouldn't have any problem. Cool. No, I have a lot of kids that watch me. I so me I want to put out content that I would be okay with my son watching. So how old is your son? I don't put his age out there. Okay, mm -hmm. no, that's fine. That's fine. But, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. yeah, that's smart. But he uh, watches stuff. So Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, and you try to I, I've I can respect trying to keep the the stream the, the personal life and the private life separate. That's a that's huge. I try to do the same. Um so you're you stream um on Twitch and you your variety stream. Um what what's your history with Destiny? Tell us a so, little bit about your pedigree with that. I was one of the people who waited through all the pushbacks of Destiny <laughs> after um, playing too much Halo. And then I got into, of course, the beta, made it to level eight, <laughs> and then waited for the release. So I've been playing Destiny since the beginning, and it's just something that my husband and I ended up really bonding over. So that's like our game. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Really cool. Um, when you say Halo, so do you family, do you, yeah, okay. When you okay, say so Halo, here we go. what was, what's your favorite Halo? No, you can't ask me. Yes, that. ask her. <laughs> the level of People discomfort. People get pick? mad about what I like. Can't no, pick a favorite Halo? For. I bet you no, money she likes armor a lot. No, Halo Reach is my favorite Halo. Same. Okay. okay. That's a really okay. That's a welcomed response. Yeah, my, people are like, Ew. I know. There's <laughs> like, a lot of people who get really upset if it's not Halo two or three, yeah. and then they get yeah. like, they want to. No, I love Reach. They want to hit you See, with look, projectile vomit. Just, it's like, come on. Reach was amazing. Halo Reach, Halo Reach Forge World is exactly the Forge was so was, good. Was amazing. Yeah, everything was fantastic except for armor lock. I agree if they had with taken you. Taken armor lock out, that would have still be playing Halo. And it's like Titan Bubble. Destiny. Only way or more Titan obnoxious. Bubble. It's not Which one is Titan it? Which one's, Bubble. Come which on, one's when the Titan does? Yeah, it's Bubble. <laughs> Titan Panic. Fist of Panic. Halo. That's what it is. Oh, okay. Halos. I feel like you also need to establish is like, are you talking about both multiplayer and campaign, or yeah. you're just talking about yeah no, both. But that's important to establish because some people just judge it on say multiplayer and they don't even like. No, I thought you know that the maybe they like campaign, but beautiful. they're yeah. The campaign made me like shed a tear. I the, I had no spoilers when I played it, and um, I remember there's a. Is it okay to talk about the campaign? Is it no, Pope, spoilers? Please don't spoil it for anybody. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> please too, don't. Is it yeah, I want to go back and play. Ten it. Years. Every time I start talking about within the decade, man, it has to yeah, be two decades. Chief collection and just, like we just. So there was a sniper PC, shot. Yeah. Around that flew that that killed somebody in the game. In that moment, I, I I had to stop playing. I had to walk away for a minute, and it was it was traumatic for me. I I was invested in this character. I'd never been. I'd never played a game where a main character in the game was was killed mm -hmm. and uh, like that. Yeah. And that was that was that was that was traumatic for me. That was a, that was a, that was an intense scene. Yeah, understandable. Their storytelling pacing on that I was really great. In reach. I'm looking forward to replaying it. It's coming out on we, PC again. I'm so excited. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah I have a relevant question to that then, since you guys are so into it. 
how close do you think the story content and destiny has gotten to what you know Bungie did with that at the time from a story side like are they moving in that direction at all with their storytelling are they getting close or is it really far away still well i mean um, they they already killed off a really like major mm -hmm. character so maybe but do you feel like, yeah, I realize it's not a campaign, but in these moments, do you feel like you're seeing oh. that? Or do you feel almost like that team, maybe whether they're there or not anymore, working on other stuff? Or do you feel like Destiny's got I mean, that? I that's... guess that you could see bits and pieces of that together. But I still think that they're still kind of far off in their own story building and how they are keeping it pretty separate. But mm -hmm. that's just me personally. So. I'd have to agree with that totally too. Totally different games too. Um, the storyline, the storytelling in Halo, I used to really enjoy that and feel like that was the way to go. These cutscenes with the grave mine, you know, you're you're mm -hmm. you're you have you have this silent protagonist really that doesn't talk much, but did but but is strong and is you're experiencing it with them. That's that linear storyline was was really powerful to me, but. Um, I think Destiny's is different in in that you are tasked to experience the story on your own. And if you don't want to read the grimoire, if you don't want to sit down and listen to the story, if you don't want to access the NPCs, then then you're not going to get the story. You have to seek it. And um, I don't know. yeah, I mean that's but but I'm I was definitely talking about in game. You know, I think and I, I just feel like they're very different games at this point, and I wouldn't expect a Reach campaign. From anything destiny release wise because like yeah a lot of it you replay you replay the strikes you know it, i feel like destiny was made to be consumable bites of story that can be replayed a lot and mm, you know the, right. the reach campaign it's like you play it once i mean you can play it multiple times with all the skulls and all that but like generally you're not going to grind the reach campaign over and over and over yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean it was it's less about open world either yeah, I right. mean, it was less about the medium so much as, like, at the end of the day, for me, like, a moment in a story is that, whether it's in on the silver screen, you know, in cinema, or if it's in a part of a campaign, or if it's that moment that they do give us, um, you know, like, they delivered some cutscenes in Forsaken with the Dreaming City, even, that continued, and I thought, you know, there was some cool stuff in there. Like, I always remember, um, still, like, the Mara scene, um, the ship explosion. Yeah, and for sure. from... And so, like, for me, those are the moments that I was like, oh, cool, you know, and the delivery of, and granted, it's CG stuff, but I like where they were going with that. I realize it's expensive, but I feel like I'm speak. I feel like the whole community wants more of that, and, like, you know, it's expensive and it takes time, but I hope that's the direction they're moving I, in. I, like, I understand the, the viewpoint of wanting something that's like Reach, but the game, I don't think, can really support that mm. with that type of story in there, like. You walk away from reach right because or, of the arc and how yeah or like, how long it takes to get those moments like say recently for me i just finished death stranding and that's mm -hmm. a very intense arc of a story to go through yeah and you just wouldn't be able to tell something like that in a live service uh, scenario yeah it's harder because of the live service stuff yeah it's fascinating do, though um, yeah. I do like the story of Destiny where it's at right now. It's definitely progressed. I feel to a place where I, they, I feel like they, they're doing a better job telling a story. I like um, that it's going darker. Mm -hmm. Same. Yeah. I just want to have like a dark guardian, you know, like I want the crucible. Oh, you yeah. always say this, yeah. Never oh, dude, I want, I want to play to like that, crucible like, where you take pick a guardian, a guardian on one side or the other. I just think that that's great. Yeah. I want to see factions be meaning something and this be like the dark arts. I was just about to say that that exact phrase. I was Snape like, I kind of want proud. the dark arts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we all need I to just go. want to see how Watts is going to wand. Just, I love how, it, Sam. Watts is going like, to embrace the darkness and just <laughs> be just. I would. It's true. She would be Wait, like be a good the time. ruler of all darkness. Are we casually overlooking the fact that Sam has two different <laughs> wands? Like is that? The I've got nine sides? more up there. Is yeah, that like okay. the daytime wand or week to week the weekday wand? Then well, these weekend are my wand. two favorite Harry Potter characters: Snape so. and who? Luna. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. nice. oh, Luna's amazing. Yeah, I like them. Yeah, they're precious to me. That's, that's really cool. <laughs> What's the other that's one? Luna and Snape. who? Snape. Snape. And uh, do you collect them as a as a like a hobby or are they I'm just obsessed? Gifts? You're obsessed with Harry Potter. Just obsessed. That's my whole stream theme. 
That's cool. I'm surprised you don't think she casts spells with those, Pope. I feel like you're missing <laughs> the whole point of this. I mean, I'm sorry. I have a line you're of voodoo presuming. Right? <laughs> yeah. You're presuming a lot right now. I apologize. <laughs> Achia. Well, we, uh, we, we we love having you on. Um, I know we we got some Destiny stuff to talk about, right? A little bit. Let's do a little it. Bit. A little bit of stuff. <laughs> there. But, and, and I'm yeah. and I'm gonna be cutting out here in about 15 minutes. So Pope's cutting that. early. Yeah, cutting early. We have to find him. Um, yeah. Yeah, the you do get fined for every deals. show you miss and every show you leave early. There's a fine. <laughs> Yep. A demerit. I pay with my I pay with my blood. Don't worry. Hmm. Yeah. Like Sam Porter. Um <laughs> Sam Porter. Bruce. So actually, yeah, like on oh, sorry. So go for it. I was ready for that Sam Porter joke though, because I love Death Strand. We'll come back to it. The to this week there really weren't many updates, right? Was it pretty much just the Iron Banner? Um was there any of new uh, stuff was, to do in was the game? There, What's the biggest that? thing is uh, the the season of dawn, right? Reveal stream. Reveal stream next week, right? So yeah, exciting. December tenth, they're gonna do a um, reveal stream no, December on 4th. Twitch. Excuse me, uh, December fourth. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, it launches. That's my birthday. Oh, nice. <laughs> ah, happy early birthday. Yeah, happy early birthday. So they're gonna be on Twitch, YouTube, and Mixer. 10 a.m. Um, it's always interesting when they do those because I'm at work and I got to pretend like I'm doing other things <laughs> when I'm listening to them. I'm walking around you with that. Furrow your brow. Like hearing, yelling your, at kids yeah. while I'm listening to this. <laughs> People walk by, you know, and you're, you're like, well, I, I, I can't right now, you know. They announced a, a Black Excel Friday uh, thing at the on the Bungie store. Some pretty cool things. Some cool discounts. You know, some in-game in -game emblems. Do you know when that ends? Uh, they said December 9th at 11.59. Oh, that's a hefty long time. Yeah, yeah you got yeah. a while. Yeah. I kind of, I want to get one of those lightable engrams. Yeah, those are pretty I cool. I saw those. And uh, here, I have some <clears throat> serious questions. <laughs> serious, okay. okay. First of all, because I have the, they're called, I have a series of them here at the house called Lumi Pets. So we have a bunny and a dragon and and, and, and different mm. things. So they're really great. They're they're neoprene things that fold down. They're kid safe and they light and up. Lumi and when you smack them, they change. Lumi Pets, yeah. So um, that's the, I'm hoping it's like that where it's neoprene and you can fold it up. But anyway, the, um, I want to know the programming of so the Lumi pets when you hit them they go through a specific lighting sequence. I really want two things to be happening inside that engram. One, when you tap it, the lights, which it turns you know green, blue, purple, uh, exotic, are the likelihood of them changing is random, and it's based on the the drop rate. <laughs> so, like, if you hit it, oh, you're going to cool. get green like more often than blue, than purple, then and then every once in a while you hit gold, and you don't want to, you don't want to hit it. You just leave it there. Right, you leave it on exotic. Right. Clearly, right. yeah, yeah. So, huh. if it has that, I'm going to buy like ten. But it, I, I'm, 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 I'm assuming they didn't do that, and that they're yeah. just going, it's just going to cycle through these random colors or these set of colors, and they're not going to be random. So. I would hope that they were random. Hmm. I doubt it. I don't. So imagine how so that's you want to like, have a color and you're saying like, this is destiny, right? You want to go to bed to a purple color, but you keep hitting it and you're getting green. You're like two blues and a green and you're like, bam, yeah. bam, bam. All of a sudden you pull an exotic, you you're like, not now. Ah! <laughs> no, that's the wrong that's time. That's when gambling becomes a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Pope always bops his engram before bed. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> God, I'm getting that exotic, man. Pop it. It's, it's two yeah. o'clock in the morning and you're you're still not getting your gold and you're like i gotta go to sleep but just one more hit you need to be able to program it's always just one more you need to be able to program like alexa or siri to be able to like activate it be like hey siri change you know hit the engram uh the other thing i want in it is the cryptarchs voice by the way so, oh, like it's sort yeah. of like oh that looks like a fine choice like as you sort of go through each one you get those annoying lines Hmm. That's funny. I'd yeah. like them. Hurry back, That'd Guardian. Cool. I get bored. Blah, blah, well, blah. Exactly. Fun, <laughs> it'd be so good. You're doing great, Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> no, um, so there's also a piece in here about um, Stadia. Um, I got to listen to your show, and I know you guys talked about it, but 
can you quickly for me maybe for our audience who didn't hear last week's show uh who's had a chance to play destiny on stadia very small amount and just Only your quick first impressions of it uh for me it worked great um i know a lot of people had like connection problems with it and it was laggy or it was uh big input delays i didn't have that but i was playing on a wired connection so I'm sure that all helps. Um, but yeah, it, it was fine for me. I do did notice a little bit, a slight little bit of input lag. Um, but for something like running strikes or doing bounties, any PVE stuff, even raids, like I'd be totally fine to do that on Stadia, but just maybe not like competitive PVP. Did you say you played it on Chromecast or Chrome? Sorry, I missed. Uh, Chromecast Ultra. Right. So you played it on that. That's supposed to be with you know, the optimal experiences. So I haven't tried that. I just yeah. only have tried Chrome and um, I was- You say Chrome, what is that? Chrome browser? Mm-hmm. Just browser on my PC. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, oh, stri- like I could do it right now while we're streaming. Um, and that's supposed to be the cool part, but like that's, I was streaming. So I was uploading, you know, seven, eight megabits a second, which frankly I have this bandwidth for it though, but it wasn't performing well at all for me in that scenario. No. I don't think it's a yeah. fair scenario, although, it still needs to work would be my feedback. Yeah. Like regardless, I know it's not optimal, but I'm not, I wasn't downloading hardly anything actually. I'm only up. So it didn't work when you were I streaming. Have. Well, I can't tell you why it wasn't working. In other words, it may not have worked regardless of that fact, but my environment was not optimal. So uh, that's sort of the caveat, right? And, like, you, and you're was, on your PC um, that's plugged in via so LAN. Just like literally right now I could play, right? Log in, play, just log into my Chrome and, um, they, that's a little bit they, they they had some issues right with chrome right they talk and about so, the extensions so they say that when you're playing on a chrome browser on a pc it's in, it might be a good idea to disable some of the extensions because they they create input lag and there's some issues with that uh, yeah that they're and, working on that and that's just player support and that's what's leading to is i was having like actual input yeah i was having some of these issues so you know, in the world of unknowns, it probably, it could have been a number of factors. So it needs a lot more testing, but mm-hmm. it wasn't plug and play for me. Um, so we'll see. But I have played it on the phone uh, briefly on a Pixel. Um, I played it over at Kind of Funny Studios. They have one. And I only played it for a brief time. And yeah, like on a decent connection, like it, it's okay. But um, was that on data or was it on a Wi Fi no, network? It was on Wi Fi. It was on yeah. Wi Fi. Okay. It's on Wi Fi. <laughs> so it, it, it like worked. Okay, I've played xCloud on an optimal scenario. I've played Stadia, you know, Doom at E3 in a perfect setup, you know, and um, when it works, it's actually, it it is impressive. I mean, look, at the end of the day, like, this is where we're going. So whether or not if it's seven years from now that we're all just playing from a cloud or whatever, Mm -hmm. it's going to happen. It's the same as, like, we all sat around and was like, no, I'm going to stick to Blu-ray, and you're like... Eventually, you know, Netflix offers an HD version of a movie that you're like, this is solid, right? Like, why would I go and click? I'm going to go to Best Buy right now and buy Last Jedi. Like, I don't want to do that. Right. Um, Unless you're really into 4K Ultra Blu ray. And so, anyway, or collectors. It's the right direction, but they flopped launch. And I feel bad, especially for the Destiny community who. Um, there's just, I tried matchmaking on there and I'd love to hear from you guys. I just, it took forever just to get in like a simple control match. So I never played control. I had to go to a strike, and even that was very sparse. Hmm. Wow, interesting. But again, it's the early access founders edition, so you have to like. Can you buy that right so now? Much. It's not. Yeah, it's funny. You're calling it early access is what it is, but that's not what they're they're calling it. And mm. I take issue with it, which is like, sorry, this is this is the founders launch. It's be the same if the PlayStation launch. They've chosen. A format anybody could have bought it though like it's not like right. we heard that you couldn't buy it mm-hmm. so True. um it just has not gone well so, so what you're saying time. is it's time to get three people or two to your friends on google stadia and jump in there into um the survival playlist and get my not forgotten is what <laughs> that's an interesting thought yeah there actually. you go <laughs> you, <laughs> it's might an be, intro. you might be on to something mean, if you need mountaintop like that's I a mean, good place to do it right? holy cow Pope, I love it. That's genius. Let's do this. 200 IQ. (laughs) That's amazing. Yeah, I I really want Stadia to actually be the technology that we thought it was going to be, but it just seems like it's nowhere near at this point. I have. I've heard um, of a lot of people in chat when I've been talking about it who like they take it to work because obviously they can't install Destiny on their work PC. 
Sure. So they'll play, you know, do a strike in their lunch break or something. So they'll use it for that. Uh, today, I heard of someone who works um, in an ambulance. So in between calls, he loads up Destiny and plays oh, off of his phone hotspot. <laughs> oh, wow. So On what? A laptop? Imagine on his phone, I believe. Phone, he has a pixel. Laptop. It's only pixel wow. right now. You can do it so through any browser. You could but, be yeah. grinding. You could be grinding just PVE stuff and be fine, I imagine. Yeah, but it's only yeah. supported on Pixel and stuff right now, so you can't. You can do any Chrome browser. I don't think is, so. From is your the phone. work work away work around it? Really? Yeah, I think it's it's, right I now. believe that's what it is. You can support Chrome browser on it. That's crazy. That would be great. That'd be great if you could do that. And I, I definitely am at times where I'm late at work or whatever, and I'd love to jump on, you know, to supervise a football game late at night, and I don't have time to go home. So I have an hour at work where I'm sitting there. I'd love to It'd be great. It doesn't so, work on my phone, for the record. Just, oh, interesting. Um, yeah, maybe not Chrome. then. So just, just what I, like, I, I know we don't want to spend the whole time talking about Stadia, but I do want to, but we, we talked about it on SideQuest, and Briar brought up the, the fact that it's essentially killed by the pricing model. And I think it's it bears um, bears notice to just discuss that real quick is that it's not truly like a subscription service. Like you get a few games that Google gives you, but the new games that you actually want to play on that platform, you have to pay the actual price that they're asking for mm -hmm. to get yep. it. And then the, the subscription gives you access to the 4K features, <laughs> which are already really oh. tough to work if your connection is having issues with it to begin with. Sure. So... Right. It's well, really tough sell. Do you think I they're mean, that, jumping too far ahead then? I think that they definitely didn't think this through completely when it comes to like the market market approach to it. Like the people are going to see this exactly. and be like, well, with Netflix, I'm getting access. Like if you had to buy the movies from Netflix and pay for the service for Netflix, <laughs> nobody, <laughs> to, yeah, nobody would buy true. that. Right. To, that's but to, true. Yeah. But to be fair, Stadia Pro, you do get Shadow Keep and you do get Samurai Showdown. You get those two free games right now. this month. This month. Right. And you'll build, if you stick with it, that's what's all, it's just a confusing service. If you stick with it, you keep those games, and then next month you get, um, was it Tomb Raider is going to be on it, I think? I'm, I'm going to double check. But Tomb Raider. For, for, a, for a game launch, they should have been working with a AAA. They should have had a, they should have had it. a big, no, I know, I know, but in facts, my opinion, they should have had a big name that exclusive to, to their uh, to their platform to br draw people in. I don't think they do you had mean a exclusive big content because they yes. got you do get shadow keep. Okay, I just wait. Can I kind of go back to what Teft was saying mm -hmm. when oh, no. whenever you said like you bought the game or you bought whatever Stadia thing is and you have to buy all of that too. So I kind of have a hot take with Destiny in that sense. So you know we have Fortnite free game, right? Yeah, yeah, and then. You can buy in the season pass to get extra stuff. However, we've already purchased Destiny. Why do you also have to purchase the season pass? That's something that has bugged me. Because hmm. uh, it's not a free game. Oh, right, right, right. Like Destiny is being mm -hmm. pitched as a free game, but it's not. Only the base yeah. version. Yeah, So, but you're still like buying even more. Mm -hmm. for just more of the content to play with your, like to get more with your friends instead of, like we already have Eververse. Mm -hmm. Why do we need the pass too? Like I understand why Fortnite had to pay for the pass because they have to pay for their game somehow because it's a free game. Mm -hmm. Right. You're saying it's so, totally free. Why? Uh, so the sequel this pass in Destiny is like story content, PV content, new maps, what whatever else they decide to add. Whereas mm -hmm. in Fortnite, the season pass is like, it's a battle pass, right? Which is what we also have yeah. in Destiny now. So it's, is that what they're calling it? I don't even remember. <laughs> I just know it's a pass. Mm -hmm. So it's pass, two names. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I should say, are we talking about the season pass or like yeah. the battle pass? The battle pass. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Because that comes with the season pass. So you're playing $10 for new story content, new PVE content, new Crucible maps, whatever they add, because we don't know, right? Maybe a dungeon, maybe a raid. Plus you get that kind of Fortnite style battle pass mm. right in there but yeah if you look at just about but you do get a there are free items you get on there it's actually exactly well almost exactly like fortnite where you do for free you do get access to that battle pass yeah pack. it's just there's, yeah, you there's just get minimal as, it's minimal yeah. yeah um a lot of the good stuff obviously is on the paid yeah. track and to watts's point you get not only the paid i forget the name of what it is but the battle pass you also get the season pass content 
like the dungeon. So it's like and, buying story DLC, right? You generally pay story DLC for a game or Sims DLC, you pay for that. So mm-hmm. it's that's what you're paying for. It, it is okay. technically a lot more stuff going on with the Destiny yeah. season pass or the battle pass than mm-hmm. the Fortnite one because the Fortnite one is like emotes and cosmetics, right? Like is there, or yeah. maybe like well, because they don't have anything that you can really right. Yeah, they're, 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 it's it's, it's kind of a tough comparison because they're they're wildly different games. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. When yeah, you Fortnite's update a game items. like Destiny, you're 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 dealing with a whole different ball of wax than if you update a battle royale map that, and as far as like to create that content, they're. I almost feel like you're. It's a it's a it's a it's a really tough comparison. I, I wonder if there's another yeah. game like Destiny in the in the in what it takes to make it that we can compare it to. Yeah, I mean, I do Warframe that at all? Warframe is kind of like that, right? Yeah, I feel like Warframe, Path of Exile, those would be examples. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The re- I mean, how I mean, does re- Warframe handle it? Uh, well, they go off of the sales of platinum, so people who would like to just accelerate. Their ability to acquire things in game quicker than having to go and grind for it, they can do mm-hmm. that with the platinum sales. You know, you still have to actually upgrade your weapons and things that make you truly powerful. You still have to put time and resources into those things, but you can accelerate that process of acquisition through paying money, or you can not pay any money at all and uh, go get certain things and then sell them on the market, and then the other people can pay platinum to you for those things that you've gone acquired in the game okay interesting but yeah i was just gonna say to the question to be fair destiny 2 is free to play but it is confusing i think to your point sam is that shadow keep is not free to play and it Mm -hmm. comes with a season pass option and if you look at those those are different things is the only way to look at it and that is why it's confusing because fortnite's just completely free there's no version of like well you need to buy it for this map and apex takes a similar model as well, right? So it's just yeah. like you just play Apex and then you can get, right, the season or the battle pass. Well, Apex, stuff. you wouldn't have access to all the characters. You have to pay for some of those. Right. Yeah. yeah. But that's what the base, those, com- regardless, the game's free and Destiny just gets, True. it just gets confusing because it's like, wait, and people still go through it. They're like, do I need to buy Forsaken? Yeah. And you're like, yes, you do. Um, Destiny 2 is only free. Forsaken is Destiny 2 colon Forsaken. And so it's like, that's where we're still kind of, I think, figuring some stuff out. Yeah. It's well, kind of... I, I have to I have to exit myself out of this conversation. Okay. I have to leave this evening. But, um, God, I, I miss I miss We hit the limit on, the on Pope, show, guys. <laughs> I, miss the, I miss being on the show. I love yeah, these sure. conversations. You got to <laughs> yeah. leave. I miss you guys. Mm-hmm. Hit the bricks. <laughs> <laughs> We <laughs> love you, Pope. I know you have the family stuff. Yeah. And... Happy Thanksgiving, Pope. Uh, thanks, have Sam. Thanks one. for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Um, Thank you. I love having uh, de- longtime Destiny people that have this, you know, and their perspective on the game and where we are now. So I really appreciate you coming and uh, bringing your, you. your, your your audience with over with you. Is there anything to um, plug before you go, Pope? Do I want to plug? The- you do good plugs. You do. Yeah, yeah, you should definitely check out FM3 on Twitch. Uh, <laughs> That's not what I... Oh, He's not good that? people. Any DCP yeah. stuff? I honestly, oh, I'm not DCP thinking DCP stuff? Anything. Yeah, well, we have some really great stuff, in, but um, we are going to be doing... I can't... I, not time to announce it yet, man. Oh. You know? See, I like the tease. But, it's the yeah, tease, we've got, the anticipation. We've got some really great... If you like the raid uh, race coverage, you've got some cool stuff coming up. We are... We are looking into collaborating with some tournament people to work together and do some PVP stuff. And um, in the future, we are also looking at more uh, fan type collaborations for Destiny and our audience and Twitch. Really excited about that. And I'm being as vague as possible. It's really <laughs> exciting to do this. Um, but um, the other the other piece of this is we're also really excited about us playing together more. We, we, uh, um, sea of Thieves is on the uh, horizon for us as a as a crew. And um, I am trickled pink about some really co- about some uh, uh, of the new merchandise that's going to be there coming out. Oh. Nice. Yeah, it's a merch, great merch store, DCP Line merch. 
dot com. And um, it's a, you know, you can still get the posters there. And um, remember, those posters help support the St. Jude Children's Hospital. And um, we will be going to Guardian. Sorry. What are they calling it? GCX. Now? GCX. GCX. Gaming. Gaming Game Community Game. Expo. Nice. We'll be there. Um, we're excited about that. Um, but stay tuned. Um, I've got a great New Year's lineup coming out. And uh, I don't know. It's hard to tell you guys all the stuff right now. But uh, wait until the New Year. The beginning of the New Year, we'll have a lot more details and some really cool. But awesome. Thanks nice. very much. And follow FM3 on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because I was hoping you would just plug some stuff like that merch, and look, you did such a great job. I love yeah, it. yeah. Thanks, Pope. <laughs> but thanks again, Sam. Thanks, I really Pope. appreciate you being here. Thank you. You guys have a good night. Bye, Pope. Have a good, good night, Pope. Pope. Bye. Boom. That transition, though. Did you get it? I did. It was smooth. pretty good. I'm watching it. It was pretty smooth. Let's see. Live reaction. I'm watching the delay on Twitch. It's taking it's forever. Not bad. Oh, there it goes. Ooh, flawless almost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just a, yeah, it was just a uh -huh. few milliseconds off. Yeah. Waiting for the bot nine or <laughs> eight or nine frames. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Technicality. <laughs> so we were talking about right, now that Stadia, he's gone. right? Now that Pope's gone, <laughs> we can actually we can talk some want. trash about him, all right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so we were talking about Google Stadia. Uh, did we did we finish up the conversation on that? I Basically, think so. yeah. Yeah. Basically, I think so. Yeah. It, I think it needs more in the oven, right? Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. recommend paying for it at the moment personally because it's just going through, um, you know, some fixes and stuff. However, in using like a case like Watts brought up, I, I do think it's it, if it works, it works, right? So if you're able to, you know, bring it to yeah. work like in that scenario, that's where I think it gets really interesting. And what I keep bringing up is I want that scenario of like everybody, I'm going to bed, streams over, I'll catch you later. But I left Destiny on and I log off, but I go in, you know, my couch or bed, and then I like finish up something, whether it's my inventory, or whatever. And like to be able to do that will be a new experience, and I'm still excited about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard mostly from people that are playing, honestly, on not the greatest connections who are actually enjoying it because they're like, I'm playing at work or I'm playing in a car or I'm waiting for the kids somewhere and I'm playing to get a bit of Destiny in. Um, That's surprising. It is surprising. I think it's maybe because they're like, I would prefer to play some version of Destiny than not be able to play at all. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, so I think think that's, <laughs> I think that's what it is. It sounds like an addict. Like I, I right. mean, yeah. <laughs> in a good way, though. But the way that you said it, I was like, well, yeah. I Can't can put down to destiny. That. Right? I can relate. <laughs> it's amazing because I remember being a kid and thinking about how incredible it would be to have the experience of Mortal Kombat in like a handheld <laughs> version of a console. You know, yeah. like a yeah. Sega we had Game, Game Boy. Gear. I mean, of course, it wasn't on that, but like we had those handhelds. Yeah, but it obviously wasn't the arcade, right? Like no. the Mortal Kombat 2 in the arcade looked a certain way and then you had like the, uh, the super nintendo and it was like it was good it was different though and then you had it on the like the sega game gear and, and now we've got all vr kind of stuff exactly it's a little tefty like even realize that <laughs> i know well that's the thing is like we, know, we're complaining crazy. about versions of the game not being as crispy as say like uh ps4 but mm. in in reality like that technology is just incredible even though it's very um faulty at the moment mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's exciting but there's also x cloud Despite that's coming that could fill that gap yeah. that could definitely be yeah. the, the real reason to get into that type of stuff yeah. right that that's totally what's the crazy part to what you were talking about before with the game library it's like we don't know exactly but based on what's going on it's like x cloud will probably launch close to in full next year with xbox scarlet and they're like oh and grab games pass for 9.99 and um also you do have to get the x cloud service i think on top of that or maybe through the ultimate um uh, ultimate games pass i think they said it might be included but oh here's 3,000 games that work <laughs> so it, exactly that's gonna be the interesting right. part like so much that's going to be available um and i assume like just as an example too to what we're talking about like the whole halo library <laughs> like it's going to be really interesting to see those two compared um and if they both work yeah because microsoft is definitely able to deal in servers as well so yeah. <laughs> servers and licenses and all that yeah sony will be the interesting one to see what they do you mm -hmm. know because we know they're partnering with microsoft but we don't know what that means yet and um 
just the idea of playing like Last of Us Two on right. the cloud someday, right, is exciting. But the cloud is included right. in Game Pass. I think in the Ultimate Games Pass is what I was saying. I don't know that it's going to be included it, in the base. It's, it's in, only in beta right now. Yeah, so it's, it's in beta slash preview right now, right? There. Like you have to actually go to a thing to sign up to actually get access to or get it, picked for it? I think it's closed beta. Yeah. Closed beta, yeah. So you have to actually get drawn for it. Mm-hmm. So I wonder, yeah, th- there's no official date of when that's going to come out of beta, and then that's going to be the real Destiny on the go machine, in my opinion. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I mean, Stadia, you know, could still come around, but they, that's exactly it. Think of how many Xbox players there are already, and if they're just willing to upgrade to the, the Pass and the xCloud, it's like all of a sudden, you know, you might have a bigger um, base of players, which, are, you know, is a big problem right now with Stadia, but we'll see. Long way to go with Stadia, presumably. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of base of players. <laughs> Segway. Comp. <laughs> oh, we played comp for a bit. <laughs> I uh, yes, we, we played comp and I, I ended up playing comp for about six hours the previous day. Six hours? I played six hours of comp. I normally hardly ever play comp. I only played some solo comp earlier this season to get some light level gains. And then uh, obviously it's cl- getting close to the end of the season. So it's not exactly a fair um, measurement of the population in comp right now being closer towards the end. But man... It's a rough experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gr- especially group. Group is rough. I think yeah. there's probably more, yeah. honestly, more people playing in the solo playlist than in the group one. There's got to be, right? Yeah, there has to be, right? It just kind of makes sense. Um, but group, oh, man, does it bring out all the toxic people, too? Dear it Lord. Does. It's crazy. Chat automatically just turns to, like, a cesspool. <laughs> I'm just like, is this... Is this the people that farm comp? They, they all just come out of the woodwork? Yeah, they, yeah. See you do a comp? they come out of the shadows. Just, all like, they really do. Comp players. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Sensing some more They all look Potter, like Death right? Eaters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's where the Death Eaters live. Yeah. 100%. Take off their masks. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really interesting seeing where that playlist is right now. And like, I'd like to have some sort of perspective on it. And I'm glad we went in as a team because I wanted to see what team play would feel like because that's where yeah. most people are gonna they're gonna get their friends together and be like hey let's go play some games and oh you don't want to play control like let's play some comp let's jump in there yeah. and it just is the the dark recesses <laughs> the 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 dank cellar of the the, the runoff cellar. of what trials of osiris was in d1 yeah it's uh yeah I feel like it's not a playlist for people that are just like oh there's three of us online oh hey let's go play some comp hey look at that even as just a casual PvP player I feel like it's just not the place for you. it almost feels like you walked into a secret society yeah and you're not <laughs> supposed to be there and everyone's looking at you like why are you here nobody talks about comp <laughs> yeah pretty nobody, much yeah, exactly. yeah that's how it feels it feels like you kind of walked in someone's house yeah you walk in they're like <laughs> really they're weird. polishing the recluse and be like do you have <laughs> tier 10 recovery better get ready <laughs> yeah yeah so that was interesting i mean like I, I again i don't live in the crucible and i i definitely don't play comp but it's uh i think it's fascinating to jump in every now and then and take a a measurement of it and poof, they got a long ways to go honestly i mm. <sighs> next so next Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever the, the fourth is, I think we're going to get that um, that reveal Wednesday. of what the is it Wednesday. OK, yeah. Wednesday, we're going to get that reveal of what the um, next season is looking like. And mm. I do wonder, are they going to give some love to PvP? I don't know. I don't know. I think everybody's <laughs> silent and skeptical because it's like we just haven't seen that big yeah. push yet. We, you know, we keep seeing adjustments. So I expect the adjustments because we're getting the solar class adjustments and I think we're going to see some some um, crucible balancing on top of that. It'll be more than just solar crucible class. balancing. I just want one thing. <laughs> yeah. I just want sparrow <laughs> racing. I miss sparrow <laughs> racing personally. I know a lot of people it's are like. Uh, it's fun even. for those of us who had fun. I had fun. I liked it. It was a fun seasonal event. <laughs> I've got a mini sparrow now, and I want to take that sparrow. Yes, racing. the micro mini. <laughs> I think it'd be hilarious. That thing would be fantastic in sparrow racing. Yeah. You, you could give me Destiny Wave Race, and I would be happy to use that little 
that little mini sparrow out in the waves. Yeah. Anything of that variety would be great. Right. So the Hunter Cape flowing in the wind. When, when they were revealing Shadow Keep, when did they say that they were going to be doing some major stuff to PvP? Do you guys recall? I thought it was season 10. That's, but what, then, that's what's coming up, right? Season 10? But then people, no, the one out. Season 9's coming up. Oh, okay. So it's I thought they said away. season 10. I don't know. I might have misheard that. I don't know for sure. Hmm. Um, Maybe they said 10 minus 1. Yeah, 10 minus 1, I, 9. No. <laughs> uh, quick maths. Quick maths. <laughs> <laughs> I thought when Luke Smith was talking to, um, to Datto that they were saying, like, not this season... But like the next season, I thought that's what I heard. It then I could have completely misheard mm. Luke Smith say that. On that, th I thought he said season ten. We'll have to have someone rewatch the clip where they. It probably it. was. Um, I'm pretty sure it was the way they said they were laying the foundation. Um, but I do believe right. it was the one after the next one. But they, I think they talked about season nine, this next one, as being foundation. Well, a little more foundations foundation. being laid. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Shadowkeep was less about that, so I do think. That's kind of what I was thinking when the speculation is like, we're still going to see more than just some solar class adjustments, but I definitely don't expect like major All right. changes of any kind. So solar class adjustments. Sure. Yeah. That's definitely not laying down the foundations for a better PVP. Like there's, I feel oh, like there's some true. fundamentals in there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you maybe mean that's the why they're are... taking longer then. Sure. If it is season 10, then... Maybe if they do class adjustments. But if they're working up to that point, see where that goes. I feel like you know. I mean, yeah, I get what you're saying for sure. Yeah. But I don't know. We'll see. It's desperately needed, honestly, because mm. you know, like I, I don't. There's a lot of people who would like to play uh, some fun comp type of stuff, but not feel like yeah. it's that weird. I think it would club. boost morale. Yeah. Especially for those who were extreme like PvP trials people and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully, yeah, I think so. With them saying that they're gonna like lay the foundation or whatever, um, it could even just mean that they are not just like putting the new stuff out, but they're actually working behind the scenes on changing things up. And then in, in season ten, maybe that's when they'll be ready to actually do it. I don't know, but um, mm -hmm. okay. I could I could see that being a possibility. Yeah. Well, it was exciting playing comp for uh, one day of the season. <laughs> <laughs> exciting is that the word? Exciting. With we ended at um, forty two or forty five, something like that, somewhere in around. You're close. There. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's good. <laughs> I'm good. So, also, yeah, like the the rest of the stuff for other quests, I just wasn't doing that. Uh, what's up, Fran? So, since we're on the topic, I, I tried Googling laying the foundation, Crucible, Destiny 2, PvP, blah, dead, blah. Um, so, actually, on November 13th, you know, they re released the trailer. It was just like, you know, play, play Shadow Keep. And um, somebody actually asked what happened to renewed Crucible Focus. And actually, on November 13th in the morning, um, so, you know, just a few weeks ago, they sort of repeated it. We're still very focused on PvP. New modes, mm -hmm. new maps. This is Destiny, the game Twitter. New modes, new maps, labs elimination testing, survival freelance. We're laying the foundation for Crucible that we'll build on all year long. So at least, yeah, this whole laying the foundation idea. I know, I knew that's kind of the line they're using. Um, I have yet one to find if it's brick at they a said time. about season ten. Yeah, they bring one brick Legos. at a time. <laughs> yeah, it's multiple people coming in laying each brick. Yeah. <laughs> well. That was the that was the exciting thing for me jumping into. Uh, oh, actually, I almost have Undying title too. Nice. I just nice. have to yeah, do. I even grind that out. I just have to do public events. That's it. And then I'm basically done. There. Yeah. I got it. I got my Randy's. I got my exit strategy, guys. No. Nice. A yeah. Round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> I definitely don't have those things. <laughs> I'm behind. It's a grind, Fran. It's a grind. I that yeah. I decided not. Don't I, worry, I don't, Fran. Yeah. Right. <laughs> You were just, yeah, you were just getting back into it, right, uh, Sam? You took a break. Well, I've been playing offline. I haven't been playing on stream. Gotcha. So, gotta keep up. But right. yeah, like, I mean, I'm not, I mean, I, I do, 
you know, I do a lot of the major stuff, but when it comes to the chase, I try to just go, well, it's hard to walk away from like, well, I've been using so much, you know, Swarm of the Raven, Mountaintop, and <laughs> Reclose for so long that I didn't feel the need to like go chase, you know, when to go, not that it's not good, or go chase these other things, but um, I'm behind on some of the Shadowkeep stuff. But it's also because there's been so many other amazing games, and this time of year, you know, I, I do think it's an interesting discussion, is that... uh I like it this way. I forget if somebody in the group here mentioned that, but I saw somebody in the Destiny community is like, I think it was Goth. It was Goth. It was Goth. Goth tweeted yeah. that, yeah. And I was like, yeah. Like I, he liked the I pacing. Think there's a lot of us. Yeah, especially streamers that do variety on top of it. But like, I don't, personally, I don't want to play one game all year, you know, same. 12 hours yeah, a week. Same, honestly. Or, That's yeah. rough. So I like binging for four to six weeks off a big release, kind of like we did, and now we're coming up on a little more content. I don't expect it to be a four-week binge, personally. I think people need to set their expectations for Season of the Dawn, um, especially with, let's remember, they specifically said last year they pushed the team a little too hard, uh, they thought. Right. So um, kind of read between the lines. I don't expect more than last year. Yeah. So I just want good Eververse stuff. <laughs> you do? I feel like we get great Eververse stuff, honestly. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> Take my money. <laughs> you, you like the vanity. <laughs> I do. <laughs> it's all about fashion. You want a, Always. a, a little wand wizard cast emote. Can they please? They go. gave us a broom. Why is that? Right? So when Guardian Love Your Saw, that's all that they need to add. Just a swish and flick. That's true. They, they did at the room. Yeah. Done. Yep. yeah. Like, I thought that that would have been a perfect time. Yeah. That's... They need a new wand class for a weapon. <laughs> one. A new archetype. We get it a wand. using wands. For, wow. for Warlock. That just blew that my mind great? with that comment. Or, well, I guess if it's a Warlock, <laughs> it would have to be like a staff. Yeah, like would it be a bow or no. a staff? Yeah, because it's, cause Don't it's give not a, a staff. witcher wizard. It's a, it's a warlock. They're like not that. Gandalf. That'd be cool, man. <laughs> oh, that's it. Oh, no, man. You shall no, not no. get wand class. Warlocks will not be as cool as Gandalf. I'm sorry. That cannot it's happen. It's okay to have a wrong opinion. Could a hunter? I mean, we already got the, the lance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you my goodness. shall not pass. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's that, true. Emote. <laughs> that emote would be good. <laughs> oh, that would be. With taunting. Well, never mind. Crota is not really a thing anymore. Oh, but if you had it with Crota, <laughs> you do yeah. that, and he'd like points at you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think, I wonder if we'll get as much, like, yeah, are we going to see this focus that we've seen on Eververse? Like, do we expect as much content in Eververse I as we've seen so far? expect yeah. Eververse to be fully stocked. Yeah. 100%. percent yeah. Briar when you need him. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, Briar would obviously be uh Briar would be disappointed that. in our conversations, Salty. but he's not here, so we're fine. I mean, we can have fun. it's whether you want it or but not. what are his thoughts? <laughs> he... he oh. Really, just still dislikes it. You know, he he thinks it's gotten a little better, but he wishes it was never added to the game. So it's I, interesting having you on. I like, understand. Yeah. I mean, I kind of agree with that. I wish it was never added, but since it's there, just take my money because it's fine. <laughs> <What a> <laughs> I'll push, buy it right? anyway. <laughs> I am a consumer. <laughs> yeah. But I do wish it was not added, mm -hmm. so I wasn't tempted to give you my money. Right. The biggest well, thing the is that <laughs> some of the coolest stuff looks like it could have been drops in the game, and if they had. Mm -hmm. adjusted it so you know like a wand a wand emote i think would be perfectly fine as a eververse transaction because it's like it's a wand there's no technical yeah. wands in destiny right now the yeah. it'd be fine some stuff looks like it could be raid drops like ships and all that and that's that's where briar gets really irate yes <laughs> <laughs> okay i i agree with that because <laughs> i use eververse i don't think i've ever purchased a ship from eververse i usually just get emotes or like ornaments. Okay. Yeah. There's a so, lot of cool ships. Vanity. Like, like there's a, a Yoden Sparrow that looks badass that's in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I disagree. Oh, there's definitely some cool stuff. But I, I mean, it'll like the toaster. So I like my little Mini Cooper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. I mean, that's the best sparrow. I'm all about the Mini too. <laughs> that's what I'm using. But I can see the Yoden Sparrow and be like, that's a cool design. I mean, it looks, looks like it's got flavor. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's just always the discussion, like, and maybe now's the right time to ask, you know, there's not much to do right now if you've earned a lot of the core stuff. I see a lot of the, the hardcore who does their job well and gets everything done quickly and high consumption rates, and they're like, mm -hmm. I, 
I don't really know what I'm doing. I guess I'm getting pinnacles. You know, at least that's there. You're trying to grind your power level, uh, your artifact level. So there's something. But if you could grind out these ornaments and these sparrows in, say, nightfall drops, uh, strike drops, whatever, do you think that's where they should still be? Like, is this where it becomes a problem still? Or do you think we got enough content and it's fine that, that you have to pay for this stuff? I'd much prefer it being sprinkled throughout the entire game. Well, we still get the options of bright engrams being, you can yeah, get one, right? But they don't give you any of the new stuff right now. Yeah. yeah they're oh, I didn't know that. Stuff. Yeah, they're only legacy. Oh, yeah. wait, when did they change that? This Just season. this season. Mm -hmm. so well, darn it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they're all legacy stuff. So, <laughs> I, no, I, okay. Hmm. It's probably was a, a little bit too um, Saved you some giving because it was. Uh, Do you think that's what you happened? Could, you I think you could play without buying a single thing and get everything. That was great. And you couldn't, mm -hmm. without even necessarily I, grinding the game real hard, you could get everything by like uh, kind of yeah. playing. But did you want to get it through those engrams though? Like, no, nah, I don't. I don't. I, mean, I, I want to drop, no. like Tef was saying. Oh, oh yeah. I want to, I mean, yeah. like if they put whatever, I don't know if the broomstick is in escalation protocol or why the lore is there, but that's where it is. Like, it would it would give you a reason and give people to play. Should have been branch fifteen in the nightmare thing. Yeah. Oh, for the broomstick. Yeah. yeah. Right. Sure. Exactly. Get to a high level and put it. Yeah. Like I, I think it's the problem. They're trying to make money off the Eververse. We as the fan base, to Sam's point, we've paid our whatever forty bucks or whatever it mm -hmm. is, probably. So it's it still becomes confusing. It's like, am I getting? The content, I mean, I think that's where we always ask the question, like, do you think Sh you know, Shadow Keep's worth it? Did you get enough content? And we're all like, yeah, yeah, I, I think so. I, I feel I got my I money's worth like out of Shadow Keep. Yeah. But then we're mad that they're putting this stuff in the Eververse. <laughs> and how do you solve that? Yeah. I think it's because we just like doing stuff and getting the, the feeling of progress of something. And mm -hmm. Yeah, instead so of somebody just going and buying it. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of things in Eververse right now that, like, Unless you play an insane amount of hours trying to grind bright dust engrams, like you have to pay money for all that stuff if you want to actually collect mm -hmm. it. Isn't it some insane I, amount of engrams you have to pop for bright dust to be able to get all of it? It's like impossible or something. I think there's actually a bunch that you can get if you do the bounties, but people don't do the bounties. But if you're like really focused on doing just grinding out the bounties, I think it's uh, I think you can get a lot of bright dust. Can you actually get all of it to buy everything though? I don't think you can. I think it. I don't know. I think it's worked. I out. think you'd probably still have to choose what you want. Yeah. Instead of just buying everything. Yeah, exactly. Thing. Which is kind of counter counterintuitive to like the collector syndrome that happens with this game. Not that syndrome is kind of a bad word, but like, you know, like the, the mentality. It's a collector's it's, the sickness. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Playing Destiny, there's a there's a lot of the collector that kicks in, and once a lot of that stuff is behind Eververse that requires money. That, that kind of gets tarnished for a lot of people. Yeah. Well, I mean, you have the triumphs. So mm -hmm. people want to collect everything. Yeah. I don't know. There's pros and cons. There's yeah, definitely pros I, and cons, yeah. I definitely do feel like I understand and having even supported Fortnite and Apex, like just buying something um, that is just a vanity item. Like I understand that business model and – I don't think mm -hmm. the gamer's ever going to, like, 100% support it. But, like, on the one side, I'm like, yeah, like, I understand. Like, the Halloween stuff is an example. I'm like, I really wanted it, and I actually didn't buy it. And now I'm, like, kind of regretting it. And then you flip very quickly to the other side. It's like, yeah, like, what? Why couldn't I just earn that somehow? Like, it would just give me a reason, you know, to play beyond um, some of the, you know, the main powerful weapons, obviously, that you can yeah. get. But, yeah. you know, you want to have your cake sense. and eat it, too. Yes. <laughs> it is. I think a lot it is, of that. Go. certifiably though the best obviously we don't want the ever versus gamers right like the best solution is we don't want that yeah. and i don't think anybody would disagree but it, it as long as down. it's not pay to win correct yes yeah. if there's ever a pay to win then i think that it's gone downhill yeah yep. mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's obviously the best version of destiny that we have in my opinion anyways i think yeah again shadow keep has it's been great been yeah it, it's a good time unless of course you only played trials and then well Trials doesn't exist, uh, but it's yeah. it's a really good uh, really good version of Destiny right now. I'm I'm looking forward to things getting better, and I'm also very excited about uh, seeing what's up what's up next week with Season of the Dawning. 
Yeah, because we don't we don't know anything about it, right? We have no idea. We just know subclass so, changes, right? Yep. Yeah, and it's dawning. The dawn. The dawn. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's right. Season of the dawn, and then we'll get the dawning uh, seasonal winter event as well, right? Oh yeah. Yep. That's right. So they did announce that. Do you think that's going to be different? Looking forward to seeing the tower. They did such an awesome job with the Festival of the Lost. So. They did, yeah. Christmas time! Yeah. <laughs> time. The, the cookies was really cool. The oven and stuff. Yeah, the was oven really was cool. awesome. The baking. It's very, very good. You I love seeing what they come once? up with. Hmm? Do you want to bake cookies again? Is what you're saying? I mean, I thought Did it was really good. I thought it was a really good system. So I'd be yeah, down it was like, if it happens again and they just like add some stuff to it. Yeah, it's funny that that was like a mini test for the menagerie, sort of. Yeah, it was. Interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought it was cool. I liked the oven. Together. Also appreciated the fact that they put all those resources in its own thing. So I wasn't constantly managing those resources, picking them up. Yes. Like that. Because mm-hmm. I, I feel like Destiny has a huge problem when it comes to that stuff. Like with the shader system mm-hmm. and all that. So I appreciate that. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. What they what they change with it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, what like what do we think Destiny needs the rest of the year now that we've settled on? Like we know Shadow Keep is the biggest amount of content we're going to get for the year. Now, I'm making an assumption, but I don't think any Destiny before. I think it's pretty safe. Safe assumption. Yeah. Yep. So we know what we just got and we just played through is the most that we're getting for the next, you know, whatever, nine months or, or more. Um, what do you think it needs to sustain us throughout? Like, what would There's you... There's only one thing I want. I want the that? queen ship again. That's mm. <laughs> all you need? That's all I need. <laughs> It's my favorite ship, <laughs> and I miss it. <laughs> hmm. But you know what I mean? Like last week, we uh, we had T Rex on, and we guessed what we thought would be in it. Yeah, uh, we took a little tally. If I ever, yeah, Ooh. I forget if we saved it, but it was like <laughs> crap. Horse, I should have. I know where I put it. So new pinnacles, um, obviously, or mm-hmm. ritual Ooh. weapons. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, we didn't think there'd be a dungeon. You know, we didn't think there'd be a new strike. We didn't think there'd be a new raid. Um, but we... You new know, activity of some sort. New PvE activity, kind of like Vex Offensive. Yeah, do you guys think it's going to be very different from Vex Offensive, or do you think it's going to be pretty similar? I think just... I hope it's I mean, a little I different. I think it's going to be different. No? Yeah. I think. But what would it be like? I'm just imagining it's going to be... Similar, I personally think it's going to be like, you know, Escalation Protocol, but set uh, somewhere else. <laughs> and I liked Vex Offensive, so I wouldn't be upset. Um, we probably won't get all those weapons either, though. That's like my biggest question. Weapons, right? Yeah. Are we going to get new weapons or are they going to be like just the moon weapons? Reskins of X Offensive. What if it was that? I mean, it might not even be you know, reskins. It might just be those weapons. They just throw them in there and it's still like a Vex... Yeah, maybe it's a different <laughs> Vex event. At this point, the weapons still. Mm-hmm. I'm, no. I'm kind of trained to so. not expect a whole new set of weapons unless it's like a big DLC drop, like a big paid drop, you know? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm assuming. Uh, I wouldn't soon. be surprised if they brought back the, um, the Mercury weapons and made it to where you could get those and get random rolls on those. I wouldn't be surprised if that's a thing because it's dawn and you know. I would like that actually. Kind of makes me think of Mercury. That'd be cool. Do you think they'd bring stuff from last, last year? I think it has to be like year that. one. From Curse right? of Osiris. Yeah, Curse yeah. of Osiris. Yeah, Curse of Osiris weapons. Yeah, would they? I feel like they'd reskin versus drop. I don't know. That's a good idea, Watts. I do like it. Well, Vex Offensive like is they... technically reskins of those weapons. Mm. Right. Well, not oh, not one hundred percent. They a lot of them have some of the. Yeah. Inevitably, all Destiny weapons at this point are some, they're all mixing and matching, you know. Yeah. We just Honestly, use a barbershop, the, too. Yeah, barbershop would be nice, right? Uh, Breeskin's the wrong term, sorry, because there's more geometry added to that stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's more than that, but they... Ornament? Like, Yeah, it's it's like an ornament, honestly, in a way. Yeah, I mean, they do touch up a little bit, obviously, right? Like how the scopes, there's always, that's what it, that, to give them credit, there's always little touches to how the scopes feel and the gun feel and it's amazing that they've added so many different things even just rate of fire you know getting something that like the like the raid auto i know it didn't come out of x offensive but it's just sat 
in a spot that we don't have too much other stuff that's there. And the way they adjusted auto rifles, it's it felt great. And the sound effect layer on top. So, you know, I, I want super, you know, new weapons and a wand like you're getting at like anybody else. But uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't expect. Me too. You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you want to, what about a gun with a wand on it? What do you think of that? It's Isn't like, there a gun like, that has like a like a bayon, bayonet? Is that what it's called? Monte Carlo. It looks like there's yeah, that, Monte Carlo. The one that looks like it looks like it has a sword on it. Yeah, I yeah, could be down gun. with a wand gun. A wand instead. I like or like pelts wands. Are you? <laughs> it's like a melee override where like you melee, but it throws a zap. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, cool. like a hunter knife turned into a wand. Hmm. Bunchy, I hope you're listening. Interesting. <laughs> Send him the clip. Would I be okay with a knife or a wand instead of a knife? Hmm. <laughs> I think they could pull. Like, yeah, I actually like where we're going. I like at some point, maybe in the next year of content, that we get like a more wizard, you know, filled season of content, like a warlock inspired. I know, you know how you feel about that, Teft, but. Warlock inspired. Magical. <laughs> warlock magical. inspired, excuse me. Make it magical. <laughs> That's the word I'm going to use. A little Magical. more fantasy, yeah, leaning into that side of things. Like, huh. But dark fantasy. <laughs> Thin ice. Yeah. Thin <laughs> ice. <laughs> but like think of like like wooden like even like, you know, dark mahogany wood with like carved snakes on them and you know well, that sounds cool. Wizard stuff. I mean Sam would be what? a lot better at imagining this stuff than I would, but <laughs> what would the core be? What would the core be made of? <laughs> you, t- exactly, there you, go. you tell me. What do they put Harris inside those, rock. Like, Sam? Like adamantium? Or are they like blood? Like what's in there? <laughs> well, you got like unicorn hair. <laughs> Phoenix what? feather. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. You know, Fran's blood. <laughs> right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially that. Huh. <laughs> All right. The, um, the sweat... Of a one eye mask recluse user. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. The toe fungus of a gnome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go. Actually. I'm gonna spec into Fran's blood, honestly. <laughs> Comp sweat mixed yeah. mixed with uh, the way to go. Mm-hmm. I was trying to think of like a really good PvP player. This is actually the new artifact that they're introducing. These are the See, honestly, things. that's kind of that's kind oh, of yeah. what I'm really excited about to be honest like the new mods. the solo subclass changes if they end up feeling real good that's going to be a lot of fun to mess around with that because it'll be mm-hmm. something new um and then having i bet the artifacts are going to be solar based a lot of solar based mm-hmm. artifact uh mods mm-hmm. so that that's always fun to kind of mess around with it's something that we have that we have super op stuff for three months which, you know, I enjoy it. So I think it, that would be enough for me if if they do really good, interesting mods that I can create fun builds with around new solar subclasses changes. I'd be I'd be happy with that. That'd be fun. Yeah, for sure. Do you think it's going to last three months for you? For me? Yeah, because yeah. I don't really care. I played Vex Offensive maybe five times and I was like, I'm good. Interesting. Yeah, um, yeah it was very so for me personally. Yeah, yeah like I. I thought it was fine, but uh, yeah, I, I had the same kind of feeling. I'm like, I've done this before. Um, Menagerie, I always go back to. I'm like, that felt pretty unique, the whole setup, you know, and the way they tied it into the feeling of the raid and just such a bang-up job with it. It was hard to compare Vex Offensive for me. I was like, yeah, it's fine, but I don't really enjoy Definitely playing Definitely was it. not as baked as Menagerie, that's for sure. Yeah. Like, I'd rather play a Strike, personally. Yeah, I'm honestly, I feel like yeah. I'm expecting this next season to be like a solid month. Yeah, and then I feel like January and February are gonna be like, well, Pretty maybe quiet. a new, yeah, maybe new exotic, but mm-hmm. mostly, you know, unless you're chasing a title or something like that, not a whole lot going yeah. on. That's how I'm gonna approach it. I'll be pleasantly surprised if it's different. I'll be happy about mm-hmm. that too if it's different as well. Yeah, it's tough coming off last year where we had a raid, you know, that came out. Um, yeah, so I think. It's going to be interesting, yeah, seeing the community. Because I, I, that's why I'm always, like, very forward about saying, I'm like, I wouldn't expect, you know, a lot. And here are the reasons, like, I think we as Destiny fans, we remember the Taken King, and we even remember last year, obviously, freshly. And we're like, actually, yeah, like, we're on the right track, like, good stuff. But they need, they clearly need reset time, and they're investing that in the future, right. usually, is from what I'm seeming to, to glean from the situation. And, like, it's just the cadence of it. Um, obviously we've got a whole new reset with this season. So, 
curious to see how they handle it and when trials finally comes back that I'm still banking on. But I think trials will come back. Yeah. Do you think it's going to be March? I hope so. Uh, I would, I'm kind of been betting on next season. It's what I've kind of been betting on. So So, we'll see. That's, that's, that's when I think it would kind of make sense for it to come back, especially if they're, they are laying the foundations through, you know, at that point, it'll be like almost a year. Um, but that yeah. would be March, so, right? Yeah. That would be the next, next season. Next next season, I would expect. Yeah, you're not talking about two Hope. weeks from now, right? No. I th- so actually, I was thinking, because Season of Dawn makes me think of Osiris, right? Mm-hmm. Like that, it just makes yeah. me think of Osiris and Mercury and all of that. So I could totally see that this season is almost like a setup for Trials coming back. Like maybe Osiris gets reintroduced and we have story stuff with Osiris. And then it kind of leads into him bringing back the Trials of Osiris. That'd be cool. Which I would like, but um, yeah, that's that's my that's my tinfoil hat theory. He's such a cool character. Like I, I hate for him. He's to a just... very cool character. Yeah. In Curse of Osiris, he was like high and by. They're like, come back, man. Let's do some quests. Yeah, I would love for him to be part of the story and then kind of cement himself as like the trials vendor. So he's around all the time, and we get to hear lines from him, and maybe throughout yeah. weeks we get to hear Osiris' story through. Yeah. Trials would be, I think that would be really Yeah, about how like Shaq sounds like him and all that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want stories, Osiris. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah, I still bet on the fifth anniversary, which would be, I think, April or. That would be May, five actually. Five years? Just, April or May. Whenever that season it would, would be hit. May, yeah. It'd be May. Yeah, it will be five years from the official launch then. So, like, get season 10 in place with its bigger. You know, new foundation, but still sort some of that stuff out. Give us a little bit of time and then especially give us something to really like hopefully be excited about to take us through, you know, into the summer very cleanly and just be excited about hopefully it's back, you know, and what are they going to do with the launch of the next big drop? And But I'm just... It just already took forever. I'm I'm stuck on the anniversary date at this point. I'm like, might as well put it around there. Might as well just keep pushing it. Yep. Might as well. Yeah. Well, give it time too. I like, mean, yeah. at this point, yeah, meaning they stripped it out of Destiny 1. They, you know, put uh, Trials of the Nine on infinite, hi- infinite Hiatus, which was just the right move. But they've got to fix PvP first. Like, I don't think they're in a position to even mess around with, as much as I'd love to say, just bring it back. I think we've, to your point, Teft, at the beginning of the show, it's it'd like, be rough. Uh, well, they need to fix, you know, PvP and get it in a really strong place. So I feel like it's down the road. Um, so like that'd be early in a sense, right? That they're ready by the, either the third season or the, we get four seasonal drops, right? So the next one's number two, right? Uh, season nine. Yeah. We get four. Yeah. Ten. yeah. So we're going to go all the way through season, um, uh, 11. Yeah. Did I do that right? Yeah. Eight, nine, 10, 11. Yep. Yeah. So season like whatever, 10 or 11. Oh, that's right. I guess it would be season 11. That is what I'm saying. <laughs> so the last season. Whenever that might launch makes sense to me. Yeah, exactly. But we don't know. Yep. Do we have Twitter questions? Briar's not here. I mean, there are Twitter questions. There's questions that are on the Twitter. Shall we? We could just do the thing where we uh, we take a question and look questions, ask a question. I'll look on there too. Yeah, like I told people because I don't think there's that many. Okay. There's I think 19 comments in total. Okay. Nice. Well, let's let's get some Twitter questions. Yeah. So, first question from Eric Dabler. I think Destiny would make a great television show like The Mandalorian. What other games do you think would do well as a show? Counterpoint. The Mandalorian is a video game. Like, it's a pre-made, packaged video game ready to be created. Imagine. Games as a service, right? Open world, RPG. You go, you pick up bounties. You go and collect bounties for loot. You you get the the uh, you get the loot from getting the bounty, and then you go to your person who makes armor and stuff. It makes the armor. So it's you're literally saying, a looter shooter. So one day, so you're saying one day, J- John Favreau was playing Destiny and was like, <laughs> I'm gonna I should write a Star Wars themed Destiny TV show. <laughs> I'm gonna drop a counter counterpoint, which is oh. you just described Metroid. Collect bounties, go from planet to planet. Get new armor pieces and cash stuff in. Basically, that's what Mandalorian is. That's what that's it's it. Metroid. You, you turn it's up, you're model. like, yeah, it would it would work perfectly. Someone mm-hmm. would just have to make it a game. It's already set up to be a game. Yeah, I agree with you though. It's, it's already awesome. set up. So you're uh, saying dude, the big reveal. Question. 
<laughs> yeah, we dodged what, the question. What other games do you think would do well as a show? <laughs> Elder Scrolls. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. A lot of yeah, a lot of tangents yeah. on that There's one. There's a lot there. Yep. There's a hell of a lot. Yeah, that'd be yeah. great. You a big Elder Scrolls fan then? Skyrim love, or just like Elder Scrolls love. period? Yeah, I'm stoked. Anything Elder Scrolls? <laughs> <laughs> Fan anything fantasy based. Big mm. fantasy person. You Final Much Fantasy? Over yeah. Yeah. Actually. All right. Yeah, I love I'm excited fantasy about based. the remake. Yeah. Diablo 2 is my favorite game. Yeah, so that's why. I, which one was? Diablo 2. Oh, wow. Diablo 2 yeah. is fantastic. I'm, I'm so excited for Diablo 4. Yeah. Me too. Ugh, yeah. That trailer that's a whole other amazing. podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I just finished Death Stranding this past mm -hmm. week. I ended up clocking in 62 hours on my playthrough. There it is. And, you know, the end in notoriously has like roughly two hours of cutscenes at the end. Oh yeah! If you, it's a long I've never outro. played it yet. So yeah, it's not really there's, a spoiler, but there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff exposition after you think you're done. Yeah. Uh, so it's you, a yeah, you at the play, end play, but you you cue things and you just sit there sort of. It's like yeah. After the credits of a Marvel movie. Yeah, but way longer <laughs> times. <laughs> but two extra <laughs> hours of. <laughs> like somebody did not care about the budget or the time. We're like, let's keep going, which I I enjoyed because I already was so invested. <laughs> yeah, Kojima was like, yeah, more, more. Um. I, I was fine with it because I was already invested in the game and had a fantastic yeah. time playing it. But I thought about it. I was like, huh, could this have been a movie? And no, it could not have been a movie because there's just mm. not enough that it could cover. I mean, maybe it could be like a three-part trilogy, like a Lord of the Rings type of saga type of thing mm. yeah. that you could cover these interactions that uh, Sam Porter Bridges went through. Uh, but honestly, it would be a fantastic HBO TV show. It really yeah, would. The, the world... Building that is cool. I agree with you. Like, it would be a better anime. I don't watch anime, I mean, so I feel like you could say I don't agree. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, cool you especially for Death Stranding, right? Because it <laughs> then you could really embrace all of Kojima's like crazy stuff. Um, yeah, but that'd be good. But it was it'd done in like a, a realistic way, so I felt like it translated fantastically. Like it could it could be like a imagine how they do Westworld, you know, with like the technology, but also. Mm -hmm. The Western yeah. type of stuff. I could see it that way. Yeah. It's a good point. I mean, the reality of that question, there's so many answers. Uh, I like Elder Scrolls. I'm still hoping they can figure, you know, Zelda out. It's a big one. I feel like Watts is going to say to make a better anime. Well, no, well, I, I would <laughs> ask an anime. You know, I would actually like to see a good Resident Evil movie. That actually follows the video oh. games and not some random yeah. action story. Heck yeah. How about one that actually has like um, respawns? You know, <laughs> like they screwed up and then respawn and be like, all right, let's not do that. <laughs> I just, I remember being so excited about a Resident Evil movie. I was like, oh yeah, it's my favorite game at the moment. I was so excited. And then I was like, wait, this is, this is not the game. Yeah. This is not That's, it at I all. I'd love to see a epi episodic Resident Evil series, you know, on mm. you know, Netflix or HBO now. That would be like cool. That. It's just such a great model of having like several very intimate characters. In in other words, like you know what? Not a ton of different characters, like The Walking Dead kind of setup. But then, you know what? Wouldn't that be make a, stuff. Wouldn't that make a good anime? Resident Evil. <laughs> yeah, I would. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. It. There'd be so Harry many Potter tentacles. Harry Potter would make it. It would look better than special effects. <laughs> How many tentacles on a scale of a thousand to a million tentacles would you put? I mean, in the more, the better. <laughs> right. Yeah. A million seems <laughs> sparing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wasn't. I don't have the questions pulled mm -hmm. up. Okay. Um, I do. Do you, you got one? Oh no, no. I got I one that you responded ready. to earlier. Which Fran, you're not allowed to do that. Fran. These are Twitter questions, Jesus. Rules, You're gonna man. make it work. I knew. I knew you could do it. It's from its axe. Would you rather eat fifteen pounds of crawfish with Patrick or fifteen pounds of turkey briar with Briar? To which I said, I mean, I'll just have regular briar. <laughs> I don't need turkey briar. Like, just regular old briar. I want man. barbecue briar. That's when I was mm, really barbecue briar is pretty great. Did yeah. I say thighs too? Mm, the you, thighs. <laughs> Briar's thighs. <laughs> I'm sure they're juicy, <laughs> thick, juicy, smoked. He's very tall, so th that would exactly. be like hundred Christian family. ears. <laughs> <laughs> I think Briar's Have you Christian. Ever thought about barbecuing a friend of <laughs> yeah, probably right. Yeah, seems strange. Come on, desperate times. He's a clean meat 
He's a clean meat. Clean. Very clean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's a white but meat. <laughs> I feel like at some point of... he was blessed by a rabbi. Honestly, so he's probably kosher. <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah, and he's always like his whole body is marinated in like beers and mm, exactly. Is, it's perfect. Yeah. Uh, conversation. <laughs> yeah. If only he smoked cigars. Like, not good for you, by the way, but <laughs> great flavor with everything yeah, he's yeah. got going on, man. I mean, I just think it'd be delicious. So that for me, fifteen pounds of that. What about you guys? You going with the crawfish or? I'm definitely. Oh, you always got to choose Briar as a as occasion. Yeah. Oh. oh, okay, okay. All right, as if, all right. So, this is relevant. <laughs> no, oh, yes. This is this is the important question. This is very important. Yep. Is fifteen pounds of crawfish too much to order at a restaurant in one sitting? <laughs> no. no, for one person. No. Okay. Wow. Because they're small. All right. <laughs> they're small, even though it's fifteen pounds. Well, uh, well, okay. Is it just small. crawfish, or are you getting the potatoes and the corn that come in a whole crawfish boil? Are you holding Usually in? that's included. <laughs> <laughs> Am I what? what? I think Sam's what? actually Holtzman right now. I think, yeah, I think this is Patrick's way of getting back on the podcast. Yeah. Is this what Holtzman normally says? That's, this, this is his response. <laughs> for me. He's like, of like, course. Oh, I mean, wait, is he also a southerner? Yeah. He's a, is he Cajun? He's always he's talking about Louisiana? I don't think he's from Louisiana. I think he's from Alabama. Oh, that's not Cajun. Tennessee? Yeah, yeah. It's not even close. <laughs> he's always talking about eating tons of crawdads, though. My first Thanksgiving, I had gumbo made. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. And he's always talking about his gumbo. Honestly. Oh, we got to have a gumbo cook off then. He would oh, gladly like accept. He would. He has a lot of pride about it. Let's get some big yes. pots in the convention him. center. Just boiling <laughs> cauldrons. You and Holtz next to each other. <laughs> yeah, Staying with one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm getting. Do hungry. you play magic cards, Magic the Gathering cards? I don't. Okay, there's the difference. This is, no, you're no, no, definitely no, no, no. not Holtz. No, this is just a cover up because we were on to Patrick. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Let me reattach my mask. Hang on. Wait, if she just puts glasses on. Come on, be a little. Holtz. There is a beanie. Grab my glasses. glasses. Yeah, you do I have mean. a beanie. Yep. <laughs> it says beanie. I need my glasses. <laughs> my special eyes. <laughs> All right. Um, I got a question, which I think will be easy, and we'll direct it first at Sam. Which class do you think is the best, and why is it hunters? Okay, that's my husband, and he's wrong. <laughs> wrong? Oh, that was it was Eric. I oh my god, know. I didn't even notice. And I told him it's okay to have a wrong opinion. <laughs> Rots, would, what, Watts, would you say that's wrong? I don't believe so. Fran, husband, I'm, a, I'm a warlock meme. Fran, where do you Shocker. sit on this question? What? <laughs> you know what's funny I, is so I'm not wearing the right shirt for this. I have my. St my storm collar shirt on. Yikes, Fran. Oh, Yikes. Fran's oh, a warlock. God. Honestly, at heart, you know, I was always. It's okay. Joel. I do have a warlock and a hunter because mm -hmm. it's harmony. They work We just together. hate titans, right? That's, yeah. No, we like titans. No. No, nah, we don't. Titans are fun. <laughs> Not at all. What kind of warlock are. What's your favorite subclass class to play? Mine is. My favorite is. Arc. I really like Stormcaller a lot. However, recently I've been doing a lot of a. Uh, what is the fire one called? Dawn, <laughs> Dawn Blade. Dawn. <laughs> yeah, because of the well. Right. So yeah. I've been using that a lot. So. Yeah, you don't want to know what the well's made of. <laughs> yeah, let's keep. Gnome it fungus. <laughs> don't get Tef started. On I'm this. just saying you don't want to know. That's all. Excretions and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, Next question. <laughs> Next question. It's cringing in her chair. Uh, I got a long one. Tell we're it. willing to put our theory hats on. Okay. So this is from Neo Drift. Oh, because his name's Joe Griffin. That makes sense. Mm. Hello, DCP crew. Love the show. It's hard not to notice gaming reporting sites such as PC Gamer, Kotaku, GameSpot, etc. dealing seem seemingly biased negativity towards Destiny 2. Example. Servers went down the other day, and like clockwork, there were articles the next day stirring the pot to generate hate towards this game. But if another game servers or something goes down, you don't hear so much as a peep. Maybe I'm going crazy. Can you go in? Weigh in. What are your thoughts? The so, world, 
wants to take down Destiny and then negative to one. I used to work at IGN, as many know, so at least I can chime in. And I know a lot of these people, uh, the simple answer is, and, you know, you see Paul Tassi, who is a huge Destiny player, like, he would write that article as well. Like, the point is you you write what people click on. People do like to click on Destiny since day one when it has troubles. And so you're right. There's, yeah. It's not bias. It's actually traffic. But I would also mm -hmm. say... I do see these responses and, and meaning I know a lot of these reporters, they don't sit down and they're like, I'm really going to get destiny today. Which game and am I, I going to stick it to? I understand destiny. the frustration, but they, they, they write what clicks. It's always top of mind when it, it happens. Everybody's talking about it. Um, where it's, it can be harder to follow some of the other games out there. Like destiny is a big game as well. Like we forget. So, so uh, what you're saying is the world's full of haters <laughs> and they'll always click on anything hating on destiny. Yes, because the audience, because the world the at large, yeah. are destiny I, haters. I, they want the gossip, the juicy juice. I honestly think people forget how like popular Destiny has been in the past. Like this past yeah. month, yeah, Destiny was the most popular free to play and paid to play game in Steam. Oh yeah, Steam. didn't those stats just come out? Yeah, yeah, on yeah Steam. that was big deal. So that's that's big to be on the top like that. Destiny, Steam. yeah, on Steam. Like Destiny yeah. is a very popular game, uh, and I think a lot of people still kind of think of it as that. Oh, that game that Bungie released, and it flopped. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the game. We still flopped. think of ourselves as a niche community, right? When in we actuality, do. it's it's quite a well-known, popular game, yeah. which we don't yeah. we don't think of it as really. Yeah, there's a lot of people I mean, that play it. So just like Fran said, it, there's a lot of eyeballs, and when you see something about oh that game that Bungie made is having problems, people are like. Oh, let's see what this is all about. Yeah. And like by comparison, I, mean, I guarantee you every site that you saw it on, if Fortnite went down, if Call of Duty went down, uh, they would write the same thing. Absolutely. I think no hesitation. Yeah. If it was Final Fantasy 14, if it was Overwatch, I don't know. Even though they're bigger games, but meaning like there's sort of a, there's what clicks top of mind for people. The Destiny through mm -hmm. all those ones I mentioned, I feel like are very high clicking, big franchises. And so it's just kind of yeah. tends to not be biased. I can't speak like you might have some bias out there, but. Um, I mean, and your cookies. So if you're searching a lot of Destiny stuff, that's going to show up for you too. Yeah. True. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, but Destiny definitely gets clicks, just straight up. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Tobias want to chime in on this, Watts? This is Bella. Thank Oops, you. it's Bella. Oh. Sorry. About <laughs> it. I mean, she was hiding oh. her face. So. Uh, I got Bella one. Rubbing her face in the mic. Okay, okay. Uh, Ice Kodiak says, What is one Thanksgiving food you must have and one you don't understand is why it's even on the table? So, what food you must have during Thanksgiving and what other. Food is just like why does it even exist? Mashed potatoes, cranberry sauce. No cranberry mm -hmm. sauce. Picks. Nah, it's a texture. I was gonna thing. say gravy for the must-have. Gravy. Yeah, you gotta have. Do gravy. you eat everything dry? No, no, no saying I'm saying must have. I have to have gravy. Oh, I that's was like, that's the meal. <laughs> why why is there gravy? Out of here. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, you went with what's underneath the gravy. I'm going to go one up that just the gravy. That's more important. Ooh, gravy, though. It's what gravy. would you get rid of? On top of mashed potatoes. Oh, yeah. I, I have to agree with mashed potatoes. I'm a big mashed potatoes fan. Mm, I can eat mashed potatoes whenever. Same. It's my favorite food. Yeah, I love mashed potatoes. Wait, Fran, good. what's your. Yeah, one. what's the one you get? Rid of? Fran's know. gonna say mashed potatoes. <laughs> he's gonna I, say I, he's coming for the taters. I don't know. Like, it's, I'd, I'd have to think on that one a little longer here. But it, off the top of my head, I was like, when you see creamed corn, I don't know. I don't really like creamed corn. It's just weird looking. Who serves creamed corn? <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with I have to have cranberry sauce. On the table, hundred <laughs> percent. That's your, like your number one like it Thanksgiving meal. When you see it, you're just like cranberry <laughs> sauce. Gets, cranberry sauce. It gets added to everything that I eat. It gets added to the mashed potatoes. It gets added to the turkey. It gets added to the stuffing. <laughs> everything it gives a little sweetness, it, a little bit of sweet. Yeah, everything gets a bit of the cranberry sauce. It's extreme. It's just as important as the uh, as the gravy, in my opinion. <laughs> it really is, honestly, because it's mm -hmm. like it's a flavor thing. It has like to be this. added in there. Something that I would get rid of or I wouldn't mind. <sighs> Green bean casserole, maybe? Yeah, I definitely don't eat that ever. Honestly. That and the, the candied yams, like, they're tasty, but I don't really need Yummy. them. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, they yeah. do. They are delicious. You they're do need so them. Good. They're delicious. You said they're tasty. I don't need them. <laughs> they're tasty, but they're all, they're also taking up space for the delicious things I'm eating. That's mm-hmm. why you just make space for it. But I want more like turkey and mashed potatoes and stuffing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. That's true, though. <laughs> yeah. The staples, as they call them, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, wait, here's a question. Turkey or ham for Thanksgiving? Turkey. Because that seems to be a hot take right now. I mean, it, it yeah. It's Isn't it normally... People are trash and turkey. A lot of the the non-Americans uh, we're seeing were trash and turkey is what I saw in my timeline. But I'm not saying if you are an American, dry turkey. you said that. But yeah, like that was the comment. It was like, you just haven't had good turkey. Because truthfully, I, th- I do think most, it's not made well like across the board because it's hard to like prep and really take the time. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a lot I was of people that good turkey. Yeah, I was going to answer ham because it's just so much more consistent. I prefer it's ham. So delicious. But I still love but my turkey. If my yeah, I was going to say if the turkey is like made exceptionally well, like oh yeah, especially with everything else on the table. Like I don't yeah. want you trust the ham. The cook. You can get you can get ham any day of the week. Like a turkey like that when it's made that well. Mm-hmm. Oh, That's man. an operation, yeah. and man, it's, it's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> It, is. it literally is like you're <laughs> putting your hand underneath skin. Right. You are operating on that bird. Uh-huh. <laughs> that is surgery. Exactly. <laughs> and then you tie it all together. <laughs> uh, next question. Anybody got uh, one? I got one from Bassett Zach, who says, I found myself noticing that titles seem to be getting extremely grindy, specifically on dying. Those Vanguard bounties were brutal. What are your thoughts on the state of titles as far as difficulty and grind versus expertise and clout? It's almost to the point where I see people with Undying and I think, I'm so sorry you went through that more than someone with <laughs> Unbroken you. where I know they love and have mastered the Crucible. Yikes. I don't know if so, I feel that way about them being <laughs> Unbroken. <laughs> I see Unbroken and they're still incompetent. I'm like, dear Lord. What are you doing? Who hurt you? <laughs> um, so I think so when when a season comes out, so for example, with Shadowkeep in this season, we had Undying, we had Harbinger, Habringer, how do you say it? Um, and we had Enlightened, right? And I think Undying was the one where it's just put in a bunch of time and you can probably get it. Whereas Enlightened and, and other ones require you to like do um, no death on the raid or all the challenges for the raid. And I think those are more skillful so it's not just like we're getting one title and it's just super grindy right we're getting yeah we're getting multiple titles that kind of fill different spaces because you want you want players who play solo to be able to get everything if they if they want to to be able to get a title um yeah so i mean i i would be okay with more titles like if you can have one for each class i think that's just a no-brainer because if someone masters a class that would be really cool that Mm -hmm. they could get a title um but yeah, I, th- I think Bungie's done a, a decent job of giving us grindy ones and ones that require, um, like, being good or doing something well. Yeah, I was going to say, there's, like, title genres happening, and I think mm. it's just Undying's on the top of our mind, and, you know, rightly so, but that's not, like, that all titles are going that way. And um, we've seen lore titles, we've seen, you know, to your point, Crucible titles, and so I, th- I think as long as they keep that up, it's fine. I mean... I'd pause the other question. Do we think that there should be any title at this point that's just easier to get? Um, I'm going to go with probably not because, see, I don't have any titles. I haven't spent I don't the, either. Like, putting <laughs> homework. Yeah. And part of me is like, yeah, I kind of want a title. But if you don't put in any work, I, f- I feel like overall, yeah, I could I could pick one. I could go do it if I wanted. Like Undying was, was pretty doable overall. Um, but, yeah, I feel like you need to put in time to earn those. And we don't want to see a – suddenly everybody's got a title – and then, you know, it, it mixes into, you know, everybody's got something. I'd rather they are pretty rare. Yeah. I would, I, would, I would like to see a progression of titles, personally. Like, um, Unbroken, for example, right? That's the only PvP title that you can get. It would be nice if you get Unbroken and then you do different things. It could be spread across the Crucible. It could be Quick Play. It could be Comp. It could be whatever. And it kind of levels up the title to something else. I would like to see some type of leveling up of of titles. That's, I think that'd be really fun. That'd be cool. I was just about to ask you that, like Unbroken Two. Like, do you want to see tiered titles, maybe? And it yeah. Sounds like yeah. Yeah, I, I think that'd be a fascinating progression. Uh, I, but I also think that it's a lot of time for just some text under your name that says you spent that amount of time in the game. So I yeah. 
I do agree that it just equates to how much time you uh, grinded in there. I feel like it's just one of those vanity things again. Yeah, but I, I wish there was more vanity stuff with it, honestly. Like, if you unlock yeah. the title and you got a ship, sparrow, shader that was exclusive to the title. That could be nice. And then, That'd honestly, really... put, people would feel more want to do that mm -hmm. and to put more time into it, which would then put more hours into their game. Yeah. So, I feel yep. like it's a better reward. I, yeah. I, that's the... Okay. I feel like titles were put in the game as a answer to a question of... How do we give people more things to do without adding more into the game? And it's like, mm. you put a title in there. So you spend X amount of time to achieve said title. And I think it's great for the people that want to um, invest a ton of time into it. For me personally, I like I only got Undying or I'm basically about to get Undying because I know it's going away. If I know the title is going away and I won't be able to get it in the future, then I'm 10 times more likely to grind for it. The other titles, I'm like... Uh, yeah, I could yeah, care less. Grab them later, maybe. Yep. Yeah, that's. I was just gonna say that's the thing about any achievement in the game period, but certainly with titles. Like I just haven't done them. You know, partially, like I said, I like to spread my time across stuff. Um, and titles are down the list versus I still need to get you know some weapons in the game, put in my work. But there's just no reward that's appealing enough for me to do that. And so yeah, like things like ornaments or. Um, you know, yeah, emblems, or uh, I always bring up the hard mode shader from uh, Wrath of the Machine, you know, an effect like that where you get this super red, mm. you know, glowing kind of thing. Or like Nightfalls. Or, or, yeah, like the, or exactly, the crown. The blue flame. And, Things yeah. that you could show off as having a title um, would be cool. And I've always brought up, too, it'd be cool with ghosts. Um, cause ghosts are so, they're just not very visible still. And I always bring yeah. up, I would love the ability to bring up a ghost and instead of, you know, how you have the aura to show off, you know, put a, an Can effect. Can I have it follow you? Maybe, maybe that as well. But at the very least, instead of just bringing up, say, an exclusive ghost, take one step farther, add a aura to the ghost that you can show off and assign, like get into like, think of it as a light bulb, but uh, imagine, poof, you know, you, you have this. Uh, ghost that has like a, a greenish smoke you know you're like whoa like you did you whatever you did on dying i feel That's like they cool. have something i mean it's pretty much nothing like that but they're touched base kind of on that with the there's like a moon ornament that you can put on your go or no it's a ghost and it's like whenever you die and you turn into this big moon mm -hmm. so that's oh, a the, visual right but the transmit I, right yeah yeah well, no, because it's not a transmat because that's whenever you load in. It's like when you're dead and it's oh, a moon. It's, the like, it's ghost. bigger when you're dead. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So your ghost yeah. is a big moon. Have you not seen that one? Yeah. No. They added that with. Uh... No. Yeah. It's really cool. So it, I guess it's kind of like that, but also mm -hmm. not at all. But it seems like they've touched base a little bit on the idea of your ghost is more apparent. Wait, um, is it a projection? No, I think she's talking about actual no, ghost. Okay. Yeah, no, it's your actual Like the geometry ghost. changes when you're dead versus looking at it like out in the hand. I ran yeah, into that too. But, I saw a big moon. And I was like, "What the?" I was like, "Oh, yeah, it's a ghost. I have it." Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, of it's a cool. It must be Eververse. Yeah, it's an Eververse purchase. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, are you coming to me, Fran? <laughs> no, I'm just jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would love to see more titles added. I think um, Guild Wars One did a really good job of titles because um, they had something like take the Gladiator title, which was just playing. Basically, quick play. Our version of quick play it wasn't comp at all. It was just a, a quick play type thing, and it was gladiator, fierce gladiator, mighty gladiator, deadly gladiator, terrifying gladiator. So mm. as you played, it leveled up, and they had things like that. But then they also had titles that were more skillful stuff, like you know, comp or raids or, or stuff where you had to really get good at the game to get those titles. Um, and that was a way of them not having to add completely different titles for every little thing. But you could still, you know, keep going and keep going to show how good you were at something or how much you play something. That's fascinating. That was that was always really fun. I feel like Destiny, it, they end up adding these cool things, but very little in between the stuff mm -hmm. to get you there. Which that's what a lot of people want to see: those little progression bites. Like if you got, yeah. if you get there, then you're more likely to get a little bit further because it's closer than the final endpoint which seems a lot farther away. Yeah, and they do a lot of stuff where they make cool things and then kind of leave it and to go and create another brand new thing. Mm -hmm. And I would love to see Destiny make a thing and just make a really cool thing and keep 
adding on top of that really cool thing and having instead of having to make something completely new. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that would save them a lot of time too. Yeah. Expanding on what they already have. Yep. Yeah. Right. Should we maybe wrap up with a couple more questions, maybe? Yeah, I got a question from uh, Beardy Plays. Says, what type of game yeah. mode, if any, would you like to see added to Destiny PvP? Rift. Hmm. I'm with Watts. I miss Rift, Rift or back. some sort of capture the flag type of thing. But yeah. specifically, Rift was fun because it was in the center, the spark. It was explosive. I, I miss that. I don't know why they took it away. Yeah, so bring it back. Jeez. And then they yeah. gave Warlocks the Rift, so they can't call it Rift. They'll have, to, they'll have to bring it back with what some other name. What insane universe is this? Yeah. I, There's a I lot of names that back. they reuse hmm. for different things. I bet you it's coming back. I was going to say, yeah, just like capture the flag. Like just period. Like it's been since day one that we're all like, so we kind of almost have it, but we don't. Like just give us capture the flag. What's the game mode <laughs> like, that they put back that a lot of people hate? <laughs> Supremacy. Supremacy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Your, they put Supremacy in but took away Rift. Hmm. Uh, I would yeah. I would generally just any kind of more objective based mode that can be in a regular rotation in classic mix. I would like to see not one that's just like locked away somewhere because anytime they make a new mode, it's like locked away on a rotation or something like that. I want another core game mode and I want it to be an objective based, not just Slayer based because we have way too much of that. We do. Yeah, actually, um, I, that's what I'd like to see changed in Rift is that instead of being able to be a slayer like you have to dunk the ball to get progress mm -hmm. yeah huh how how do you make sure you get the ball <laughs> well it was always pick you had to up. go in the center <laughs> pick it up yeah <laughs> oh, i know i mean you're fighting over it so it could be tricky depending and no we're saying that be. like instead of having like what was it fifteen thousand or something points to win you'd have to actually dunk the ball to get a point yeah in rift, oh, in rift I, you I could still you kill for your own yeah okay. you could still kill and, and points, win the game yeah yeah. Yeah. So it was I'd Slayer. Like something like Griff Ball. Yeah. Maybe. How does Griff Ball work? <gasps> Griff Ball? Yeah. It's two teams pit up against each other, and <laughs> you basically got to make a goal. Yeah. You pretty much what, pass it around? Like, is that the, the concept? Mm, you don't have to no? pass it around. Just run it to the goal? Just, yeah. I never really played Griff Ball when I played Halo. It's fun. Yeah. Sucks whenever your teammates turns on you, though. Uh. <laughs> Feels a thing. Mm -hmm. Unless you were playing with a group of your friends, then it was real funny because they're all mad. I never did that. I would never do that. <laughs> Maybe they could. Or I would do that. You know, Destiny's always obsessed with balls, so they could put one of those balls <laughs> in the game, and we could throw it to <gasps> the our big teammates. purple ball. Yeah, you could throw back and forth. That'd be fun. Yeah, they could totally take take the ball that they use for everything, and instead of it being a riff where you you know a spark where you pick it up and you have to go dunk spark, you can actually have a ball that you can toss to different teammates, and it can be intercepted by guardians and stuff. I don't know how that would yeah. work with aim assist stuff because the balls have some very heavy aim assist. Maybe just take it away, but then it feels bad. Yeah, so I no, know. I th that was the first thing I thought of was yeah, like using the the whatever originally Wrath of the Machine kind of orb style, tossing yeah. it to each other and like a hot potato thing. Where you have a certain amount That'd of time be so fun, though. to get it there, and then you kind of. That'd be fun. But you know, those, it's easier said than done, right? Because next thing you know, you end up with just like a bunch of team shotting or something of walls of mm. guardians like walking towards a goal. But um, I think there's room. I would just still rather like capture the flag throughout history. Period. Like I don't know. Like I, I don't know. I I, I like what they did with Rift, but like I liked Rift capture the flag is just so standard, <laughs> and I think they they want to do something new, which I respect, but. I think everybody just wants like capture the flag <laughs> like why not just do it i'm okay with them innovating too for sure i, no, I mean i want both but yeah. why not like would do you think they shouldn't do like just sort of standard capture the flag theft honestly i don't know like, should i they think avoid it? i don't see any reason why they haven't brought back rift because rift was relatively unique and it was a little bit yeah. different from capture the flag because you had to actually go in the center and grab it and you could um could didn't you explode if you held onto it too long Am I remembering that incorrectly? That's right. Maybe it did have that mechanic already. Yeah. I might be just projecting yeah. that into the game. <laughs> did you? Yeah. Did you dream it up? I might have dreamed that. Yeah, because it's been a while since I played Rift. Um, I remember Rift being fun to casually play. So that's one of the reasons why I do. I, I missed it. 
No. See, this is the thing, right? In, in D1, I feel like they created modes that felt very Destiny. And then with D2, they tried to create these modes that do not feel Destiny at all to me. Um, like Countdown. That's not a Destiny mode. That's like Search and Destroy. Belongs yeah. in the super slow tactical type games, which Destiny, I think, for it to be a really... The, the best Destiny experience isn't that <laughs> i don't think a destiny experience in pvp is like crazy and space magic and people are jumping around and doing crazy stuff um so i would love to see them do more modes that feel destiny rift was that i think i think trials worked really well with that yeah um but countdown survival eh. i like control a lot yeah control is a classic for destiny mm-hmm. yeah yeah say one more right. question yeah maybe just one last one Unless we don't have one. There is definitely questions. Hmm. What's... Okay. Sir Redbeard said, what's everyone's favorite sci-fi movie? I saw that one floating around. Mm. And I had to <laughs> ask it. Mm. I know. These type of things. Like, Yeah, I need wait, a list, but the top of my head, I was like, Alien... Ooh, mm. that's a good yeah, one. Yeah, thing. Aliens are, That's aliens a really good one. Like any horror sci-fi, I love <gasps> Blade Runner as well. But, mm. So I guess um, Arrival mm. would technically be sci-fi. It's Aliens. That was right? a really good movie, yeah. I love that movie. Arrival is... Sci- I love movies where I come out and I'm like, dear God, my whole perspective on the world has changed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Arrival was one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm having a hard time with this yeah. question. Right. It's a tough question. It, there's so many great films out there. No, it's so not you... even that. I'm not going to lie. I'm not the biggest sci-fi fan. What? I, I'm i very <laughs> much a fantasy person. So they don't, they don't cross genre. over? Love Lord of the Rings. Love Hobbit. Love Harry Potter. Love Narnia. Love all of that stuff. No, I mean, they do. Like, I've seen Star Wars. I've seen the Star Trek movies. I've seen Blade Runner. I've seen Alien. I've seen it all. But I can't really say which one's a favorite because I don't think I have one. Okay. There's nothing that I would really actually. The the second Tron, actually, I really loved that one. Mm-hmm. But is that would you call that sci-fi? Yeah, no? I would definitely call it sci-fi. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, I guess. Okay, good. Yep. Like I like them, but that's not the genre I reach for. All right. Yeah. Fair, fair. It's funny. It popped into my head. I'm like, do people consider Mad Max a sci-fi? And it's I lo- I was looking, and they some people do. I feel like it's <laughs> action out. with a hint of sci-fi. Yeah. Science fiction. It doesn't I mean, have to it's be like in Christmas space. movies. What makes it's it a Christmas true, movie? True, true, true. Yeah. <laughs> it's how you define true. it. Yeah, like mm-hmm. if it just sort of It's happened. all subjective. <laughs> I mean, I do think it, it, I was looking. It makes sense to me that Mad Max is on there, but it depends on how you define it. Was there um, science? Was it not based on fact? Congratulations. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they use science. It's blurry. So. Um, like yeah, Wally's on this list, and I'm like, actually, Wally's pretty darn good. Like, <laughs> oh wait, Wally's let me back movie. check. Then I love Wally. There it is. <laughs> we found. Say, I, there it is. <laughs> I'd watch that one again. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with Interstellar. Interstellar was a great yeah, movie. Yeah, I knew that was good. I've not up. seen that one, and I've heard it's so good. Yeah. I need to watch it. It's a dope film. I want to throw out there, since we were on this topic and I've been waiting to just say it, I started rewatching because of Disney Plus and Rise of the Skywalker coming up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I started rewatching episode one through three, uh, you know, um, uh, Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith. And man, those first few movies just struggle. <laughs> Personally, <laughs> understand <laughs> as kids, that's not what I wanted to talk about. Uh, as kids, I think great kids' films, I don't know why we had to approach them that way. Some of the dialogue is so just like oh, so it's bad. bad. Like, anyway, <laughs> so bad. getting past that, the fights are still so cool, and the fact they never screwed up screwed up Yoda is awesome. Screwed um, up Yoda, Obi Wan as well. <laughs> screwed up Yoda. <laughs> screwed up. Um, Baby but, screwed up. No. Holy cow! I forgot. And you should spend it if you don't want to watch them all. Spend the time and go back and watch Revenge of the Sith. Um, holy cow, man. The third one, episode three is just great. Like, there's very few things that I was like, you know, jumping between them. I'm like, this is, well, why didn't you make this the whole time? This is all we wanted. And uh, there's such cool stuff the, overall, other than the, I have a couple the high, lines at the end. I have the high ground, Anakin. It's over. <laughs> couple lines at the end. <laughs> it's other over, Anakin. That, I have the high ground. 
couple lines at the end. I'm telling you, go back. It's honestly, it's great. Um, and I was surprised how much I just really liked what they did with that film. Um, Put it in your so. Twitter bio, then yeah. we'll know. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to rewatch but, it. Meaning, I brought it up for that reason, Teft. Everybody remembers the end. Where's Padme? No, <laughs> like I get the meme, and I was as disappointed at like, why did you use the thought of the Anakin out of Attack of the Clones? We didn't like him being this angsty teen sort of thought process that he had. This this twisted. He wasn't dark enough. But anyway, when he finally became Darth and saying that nobody likes those lines, but that's all everybody remembers. But everything around it is so good, man. Everyone really. likes this is the way. And Mandalorian is going great. This is the way. So anyway, sorry. Good Seriously, tangent. Seriously, take the time. Just watch Ep 3. Come, that's your homework. Everybody on DCP, go watch it. Let's talk about <laughs> it next Subscribe week. Subscribe to Disney that Plus. for the audience. If you haven't already, <laughs> go watch. <laughs> yeah, in 4K as well. Oh, man. Really looks good, too. So Yeah. Anyway. Did we cover all the sci-fi movies? <laughs> yes. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Well, you know when they say this is the way, it makes me feel like I'm watching The Handmaid's Tale, where they're like, blessed be the fruit. I'm like... I haven't seen that yet. Well, maybe. I mean, there's Baby Yoda, so... All right. Handmaid's, babies, this is the way. It's all connected. Handmaid's Yoda way, right. baby. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, uh, be the Yoda. Is that the show, guys? Is that the episode? That's the show. I think so. Dang. All right. Well, it has been a fantastic episode 164. Sam, where can people find you on the internet? <gasps> on the internet? On the internets. <laughs> You're now, surprised. You can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Sam. Uh, it's S-E-U-M. There we go. Or on Twitter and Instagram, just Sam. Cool. Perfect. Yeah. Should I Thank go? you, guys. I really had so much fun. I was so nervous going into this. No, so you were an easier. amazing guest. Yeah, it was oh, fantastic. So, 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 so. Stop, but go on. Sam, <laughs> you are a delight. Let me just say that oh, much. Thank you, guys. Uh, yeah, it was awesome. awesome having you on the show. I had fun. Fran? Hit it, Fran. Uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitch right here at FM3 underscore. There's an underscore there, but FM3 on Twitch. I can't believe Pope forgot right the underscore. I honestly I hate saying it and like if you type in FM3 on Twitch right now at least it's easy to disaster. Find. Oh no, no it's, it's easy, easy to find. find. Okay. Why well, you ruined it? For me. <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyway, I'm playing Sekiro right now and uh, yeah. you getting good? Oh my. I'm I've been I was already, watching at the in-laws. Yeah. Yeah, I watched that by. I'm I was I was ranked. hold I was holding my phone and I was like I don't need audio for this. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> just look at my face like, um, I rang the demon bell playing on hard and uh, man, Ooh. what a treat. I Ooh. haven't done that actually. I'm rooting for you. Yeah. Thank you. It's such a fantastic seriously. I think everybody talks about how hard it is, but aside put even put it outside it's such a well-designed game yeah. and uh, Oh, it's a game it's of the, the year candidate ever. top 5 easily. It's, it's amazing. Um, but yeah. Um, I am Miss 5000 Watts. You can find me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. Just look for Miss 5000 Watts. I'm going to be jumping into Monster Hunter World next week because new monsters are coming on the 4th. Ooh. So, very exciting. Nice. That is exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also, if you want to talk to me, you can talk to me at Teft uh, and also catch my streams, twitch.tv forward slash Tefty Teft. Next week, I guess, is um, Halo Reach on PC. Excited about that. Also, I haven't. I got to dip back into Borderlands Three. Check out the stuff that's been going on there, and uh, obviously looking forward Mellow to the Destiny down. stuff. Yeah, Mellow One Takedown. Yep, I haven't done that yet. So I got I got stuff I got to do. Um, yeah. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Appreciate all support. If you uh, you know whether you support us via Patreon or if you're a, a Twitch sub or um, download our podcast through all the various places or listen on um, Spotify, YouTube, all those. All those locations. Really appreciate all the support across the board. Happy Thanksgiving if it's relevant to you in the United States. But thank you. If not, happy Christmas beta. Yeah, happy Christmas beta. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we'll see you next week for another episode. Really appreciate all the support, guys. Thank you, everybody. Bye. 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 <laughs>